Likeling. Oh, oh, coming through! Or when you thought it'd be okay to pet that squirrel in the park. Good squirrel. Good squirrel. Shit! While we can't help you with all that, we can help you bank smartly at usbank.com slash smarter together. Member FDIC. What's up? This is Anthony Edwards, and Minnesota Timberwolves basketball starts now. It's another Keontae George turnover. And he's up for the What's up? This is Anthony Edwards. Slams it in traffic over John Collins. That was sick. The postseason has arrived as the Wolves and Suns are set for a game one matinee matchup at Target Center. Wolves playoff basketball is brought to you by U.S. Bank. The official bank of the Minnesota Timberwolves. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. By Marvin, custom crafted windows and doors designed for your world. By Treasure Island Resort and Casino, the exclusive casino partner of the Minnesota Timberwolves. And by Mayo Clinic, your source for medical answers. With the call of tonight's game, here's Alan Horton. For the first time in 20 years, the Minnesota Timberwolves will open a playoff series on their home floor. You have to go all the way back to the 2004 postseason when the Wolves were the number one seed and made their run to the Western Conference Finals to find the last time they were a higher seed than their opponent. Now, Minnesota has similar ideas about making a run like 2004 this season, but to accomplish that, they'll have to do something they couldn't do in the regular season. Let's beat the Phoenix Suns, who won all three matchups, including as recently as last Sunday in the regular season finale here at Target Center. It's the third seeded Timberwolves against the sixth seeded Suns in a best of seven first round playoff series. It is the third straight postseason appearance for Minnesota. After advancing out of the play in each of the last two seasons, the Wolves avoided that scenario this year with a 56 win performance, second most wins in franchise history. They earned the number three seed and they have earned home court advantage in this first round against the Suns. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be great. Electric, a lot of excitement in the city, certainly excitement around the organization. Um, it's our job to get off to a really good start, which we've been talking about, play the same type of basketball we've been playing all season and, and be able to lift that, actually. And It's been a great home crowd. I think we've sold out most nights, so we're excited. And there was plenty of excitement at Target Center this season. A sellout every night, a 30-11 and 11 home record. That was tied for the third best in franchise history. It was the fifth best of any NBA team this season. But as good as the Wolves were at home, they were even better on the road. Third best road record this year at 26 and 15. Overall, it was a balanced attack, whether it was home, whether it was road. And the Wolves looking to take advantage of having this home court and the number three seed, as Rudy Gobert talked about during practice this week. It's right now. You know, I'm, I'm really uh, embracing the moment. I don't plan, obviously, uh, retiring anytime soon, but uh, you know, I really believe that we have a chance. You know, I really believe that those those type of season that we had don't come just like that. You know, and um, and some teams are uh, sometimes never have the opportunity to to get back together for a lot of different reasons. So we have a unique opportunity, and I truly believe that uh, everyone in the locker room is aware of that. Yeah, Rudy Gobert trying to make the most of a rare opportunity to make a deep run in the postseason, something he and Mike Conley both touched on this week at practice. And what a different week this was compared to the last two seasons when the Wolves were embattled in those play-in games and having travel days and games and not enough preparation time for their first round series two years ago against Memphis or last season against the Denver Nuggets. They had a day of rest on Monday. They got back to work, got some messaging from the coaching staff in general terms on Tuesday, got a little workout in, then Wednesday went at it hard. 45-minute film session, then a 90-minute practice. Then more film and more practice on Thursday, same on Friday. And the Wolves know they have work to do against this Phoenix Suns team, which absolutely dominated the three games in the regular season. Timberwolves fell behind in the first quarter of every single one of those games, down by 10 or more. In fact, they trailed by as many as 14 in the first matchup in the opening quarter, by 17 in the second one, and by 23, 22 I should say, just last Sunday. And the Suns have coasted from there. The Suns have been up in all three second halves by 10 or more points. They've dominated offensively, defensively, so there is work to do for the Timberwolves. We'll talk about some of those keys 
coming up to having success against this Suns team, which came in sixth in the West, 49 and 33. The Wolves, the three seed at 56 and 26, the first time since 2004, about to take on an opponent with home court advantage. We'll get some keys to the game. We're working our way towards the starting lineups. The opening tip, the injury report, all that in our national anthem coming up on the Timberwolves Radio Network. Why do we say I'm into basketball? Because basketball's exciting, like catching a t-shirt from a cannon or feeling the pulse of a packed arena. There's the in-your-face slam dunks, the highlight reel alley oops, and the three-point buzzer beaters. It all gets your heart pounding. Just like playing the lottery. Minnesota Lottery. I'm in. Must be 18 or older to play. At Target, we're home court advantage for the hometown sports fans. And with the Timberwolves season in full gear, we're here to help you gear up and make your game day prep a slam dunk. Hear that? That's what you call a buzzer-beating three-pointer for the win. Time to dish up your famous nachos or put a full court press on some jalapeno poppers. Then serve up some sweet desserts to celebrate the W. However you do game day, we're here for it at Target and Target.com. Wolves fans want to get playoff tickets right now? Skate offensive rebound. Put back hammer. Yes! Become a 2024-25 season member and you can pick out your seats for the 2024 playoffs today. Out to McKeel in the corner. A three ball splashes home! Memberships feature phenomenal perks like 25% off concessions and team merch at every Wolves home game. Plus pay for your membership monthly. You gotta love it! Learn more at Timberwolves.com slash memberships. You're listening to the Timberwolves Radio Network. Tip-off set for 2.47 local time here in the Twin Cities. It's an absolute whiteout here inside of Target Center. A packed house, not an empty seat in sight. As it's an absolute whiteout with shirts given away, towels given away. Both teams are on the floor preparing for game one. The third-seeded Timberwolves, the sixth-seeded Phoenix Suns. Along with studio host and executive producer Cal Soderquist, I'm Alan Horton. So glad you're along with us on this Saturday afternoon. Our engineer is Adam Van Connet. Our statistician is Dave Handelin. Our studio coordinators are Alex Leibolt and Ben Haney. Glad you're along with us on our flagship. Throughout the first round, you'll hear every game on 100.3 FM, KFAN, the fan here in the Twin Cities, the iHeartRadio app, the Timberwolves radio app, the NBA app where the Audio League Pass is available for you there. Timberwolves Radio Network and this afternoon on Sirius XM Satellite Radio Channel 86 NBA Radio. Glad to have you along with us. The Timberwolves had a little issue in the regular season against the Suns. Not so much in the first mini, but the last two turnovers were a big deal. Something that Anthony Edwards touched on this week. Like I said, they got tough shot makers, man, and takers, you know, so and they're not going to make them all the time. They're, they're going to they're make some, but they're not going to make them all the time. We just can't feel they, they offense, get them open looks. We can't keep giving them open looks. We turn the ball over at a high clip in the first quarter against them every time, and they give them open looks. The Bills, the Bookers, they get open threes. Allen's get open threes. Um, I think if, we, if we're able to get a shot up, we ain't got to make them all the time, but just get a shot up and not turn it over and get back and set our defense and have Rudy as the anchor, I think the game is going to be a lot different. You can hear an ant's voice. He was a little bit under the weather last weekend, the beginning part of this week. He says he's feeling better and stronger every single day. But the Timberwolves, 19 first-half turnovers the last two times these guys matched up. That tied an NBA record. The Wolves had 11 of those in the opening quarter. and They've just struggled to compete with the Suns in the opening 12 minutes. We'll see if they can change that today. One guy they need a big series from would be Carl Anthony Towns. He touched on reaching the postseason for the fourth time in his career. You know, I feel like every postseason has presented a new challenge for me. I've had postseasons where I felt like I had to do so much when I look back and say I could have done less to actually give us more. There's postseasons where I felt, you know, uh, I, I needed to help us by doing less and I should have been doing more. Well, Carl Anthony Towns will have to be right there with Anthony Edwards because 
in the regular season, the Suns had the three best players on the floor. It was Devin Booker, it was Bradley Beal, it was Kevin Durant, no particular order. And if the Wolves are going to win this series, they can't allow the opponent to have the three best players on the floor. Anthony Edwards was held to 14 points, six rebounds, four assists in the three games. He shot just 31%. 3 of 11 from distance. Cat missed one of the three games. He was off on his shooting the last two games since returning from the torn left meniscus. So, the Wolves and Suns, we are set for tonight's national anthem. Then we'll get you the starting lineups, the keys to the game, the injury report, and the opening tip. We're getting set for game one on this Saturday afternoon. Here's our national anthem. Can you see? What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last flaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the rapids we watch were so gallant. rendition of our national anthem here before game one Timberwolves and Suns let's get right to the starting lineups here tonight first for the hometown Timberwolves their starting lineup sounds like this hey this is head coach Chris Finch and here's our starting lineup for tonight at guard Mike Conley Ohio State left side three Conley again he's feeling it tonight his fifth three ball at guard Anthony Edwards University of Georgia Trying to turn the corner on Gill gets into the paint runs it up on flash he got it for two more 51 for Anthony Edwards, a new career high. At forward. Jay McDaniels, University of Washington. Jay left-handed dribble, mid-post, hesitates, rises, top two, off the front rim, and it trickles in. Big-time shot by Jaden McDaniels. At forward. Carl Anthony Towns, DBN for life. Drives into the paint to the corner. Here's Towns for the lead. He got it. Welcome back, Cat. At center. Rudy Gobert, Saint-Quentin. Friends. Conley with it around the Rudy screen. Lobs it up there. Oh, Rudy. Highlight reel dunk again. What goes up must come down. So the Wolves have their preferred starting lineup here for game one with Conley and Edwards in the backcourt, McDaniels, Towns, and Gobert. This quintet has started 45 games in the regular season. The Wolves went 30 and 14 in those games. They played over 600 minutes together, a 119 offensive rating, a 111 defensive rating. That's a plus eight net rating. That's 10th best out of 27 lineups that have played 250 or more minutes together. And you get the feeling, even though the Wolves are the three seed against the six seeded Suns, it's the Suns who are favored in the series. And a large part of that has to do with their Booker, Beal, Durant trio that's been playing really well since Christmas. Remember, the Suns started the year 14 and 15 on the season. They've gone 35 and 18 since. That's the fourth best record in the NBA. And over that stretch, they've had the sixth best offense, the 10th best defense, the seventh best net rating. And their starting five, we'll get to that in a second, has been dynamic. And the Wolves have seen that firsthand as the Suns have taken all three meetings so far this year. Timberwolves are gonna have to get big performances up and down the lineup. Mike Conley's gotta be aggressive looking for his shot. Anthony Edwards has to do what he normally does in the postseason. He averages 28 points a game 
in his third postseason now. He has played 11 postseason games. Last year against the Nuggets, he averaged 32 a game. Jaden McDaniels, three-point shooting over the last 29 games is under 30%. He shot 37% over his first 43 games. He's one of, or the number two, corner three-point shooter for the Timberwolves in terms of volume. He's got to be able to knock down open shots. Cat, who was playing in just his third game since returning after missing 18 games, five weeks with the torn meniscus has left knee. He had a great week of practice, according to head coach Chris Finch. He feels ready to go here tonight. Cat is going to have a difficult matchup because the Wolves are going to switch the matchups a little bit than we saw in the regular season. Cat's not going to defend Grayson Allen. He's going to defend Kevin Durant. Mike Conley will chase around Grayson Allen and Anthony Edwards will be attached to Bradley Beal. Jaden McDaniels will handle Devin Booker in the matchup inside Rudy Gobert and Yusuf Nurkic. Timberwolves can't turn it over and they need an absolutely monster start here tonight. Again, they've trailed in all three first quarters by double digits or more. Starting five for Frank Vogel. His first year as head coach of the Suns, he's led them to the sixth seed in the West. And as I mentioned, they finally got Bradley Beal healthy. That made a big difference since Christmas. They have the fourth best record in the NBA. His starting five, Booker and Beal in the backcourt. Booker averaging 27 points a game, sixth most to the NBA, plus five rebounds and seven assists. Bradley Beal, 18 points, four boards, five assists. Has played really well of late the last five games. Coming into the playoffs, 27 points, six rebounds, shooting a whopping 61%, and 19 of 26 from deep, that's 73%. That includes a six for six, three point effort against the Wolves last Sunday. Grayson Allen is the small forward, averaging 14 a game. He's the NBA's leading three point shooter, a career high 46% on six attempts per game. Kevin Durant, the four-time, the 14-time All-Star, 10-time All-NBA. He's led the league in scoring four separate times. He averages 27 points a game, fifth most in the league, seven rebounds, five assists, and over a block per game. Yusuf Nurkic, the big man in the middle, 11 points, 11 rebounds, four assists per game, plus a block. This Suns lineup only played a total of five minutes together before Christmas, but since December 27th, They have played 98% of their minutes together, almost 500. And over that stretch, they have a 124 offensive rating. That's third best amongst all lineups that have played 250 or more minutes. They have a plus 11 net rating. That's fifth best among those 27 lineups that have played 200 or 50 more minutes. Their head coach, Frank Vogel, on slowing down Ant, but it's not just Edwards he's concerned about. Yeah, I mean, I think we all understand the, you know, the threat that he carries, what kind of player he is. Uh, but that's, it's not just about uh, Ant. The gaps are about whoever's, whoever has the ball. If, if Cat and uh, Nas or Conley or any of those guys are, are looking to attack the paint, we want to have a heavy gap presence, you know? And then you know, when the ball moves, we want to fire out of that and, and contest threes or prevent threes. You know, so it's just just part of being a connected uh, multiple effort defense, you know, that, uh, you know, hopefully we're much stronger with those habits today than we were at the beginning of the season. Suns won seven and three in their final 10 games against quality, quality opponents, all 500 or better opponents to earn that six seed. Their defense has been good and they are focused in, got here on Friday, got a workout at the University of Minnesota yesterday and they are set for game one here tonight against the Timberwolves. Wolves come out in their classic edition throwback uniforms, honoring the very first jersey in franchise history. The classic frost white tops and bottoms with the old Shep green, the old Shep blue trim. Wolves across the front of their chest in the old school font and the old Shep logo makes an appearance on both sides of the shorts. Classic edition court as well. Timberwolves 17 and nine in this jersey. Suns are in their purple icon jerseys, tops and bottoms. They've got orange and white trim. Their names on the back are in orange, their numbers in white. Mark Davis will toss it up and the playoffs are underway at Target Center. Nurkic wins the opening tip and here's Bradley Beal bringing it up in the front court. Left wing to Devin Booker, guarded by McDaniels off the Durant screen, right side Nurkic. Hand off to Beal up top, Ant's chasing him. Bounce pass, Durant switched on to Gobert. Pulls him out to the perimeter, eight to shoot, gets a running start toward the baseline. Tough fall away too, well short. Gobert's got the rebound. Hit ahead to Ant, he's gotta go. 
pull up three, no, he pulled it down. He looks for the trailer, down, straight away three. It's offline, McDaniel's offensive rebound. Put back with the right hand, count it for two. And the Timberwolves are off to a two nothing lead to start this game. Booker back the other way. The Suns are going from left to right across your radio in front of a packed house. Gobert guarding Durant again here. Rudy, who's been number one in the NBA, defending in ISO. He beat Durant last time. Now Durant will try him again to the baseline. Cut off, step back, 15 foot on the way is good. My goodness, you just got to tip your cap. 27 points a game for Kevin Durant. He hits that to tie the game. Here's McDaniels right side, Gobert. Out of the left wing in Conley, they lob it off to Towns against Durant. Left side of the floor, a couple of dribbles, here comes the double, bouncing out to Conley. They swing it around to the corner, McDaniels is open, and the three balls off the heel, no. So Jaden, as I mentioned, last nine games shooting just 23% from beyond the arc. He got a good, clean, open look, just couldn't knock it down. Booker down the lane, bump from behind, the ball pinballs around, and it ricochets out of bounds. It will be Phoenix basketball. I don't know if Chris Finch is going to use a challenge here. Nope, he's going to say no. Not worth it. Just 29 seconds into the game. So the Suns will trigger in to Durant, and his fallaway baseline over Towns is good. I mean, those last two shots by Durant give you an idea of why this guy is such an elite player. The 2008 Rookie of the Year. 2014 MVP, two titles, two-time finals MVP. Oh, Ant down the lane in traffic, threw it to the wing, picked off by Durant. Booker back the other way, left angle, hand off Durant. He got stripped from behind by Anthony Edwards. Ant comes away with the ball up into the front court. Angles with the left hand of the free throw line, the pull-up line drive jumper is good. The Wolves have tied it up at four. Two gone, 10 left to play, opening quarter. Had five turnovers last game against the Suns. Here's Booker on a pull-up right side three. Off the rim, off the top of the backboard, and then it rolled back through the cup. But it touched some stuff on the top of the backboard there. There's some cameras back behind there. There's a shot clock, obviously. And the referees deemed that that ball out of play. So the Wolves will bring it up here from right to left. Overall in the season, the Timberwolves 14th in the NBA in first quarters. And boy, have they struggled of late. Ant turns it over in the lane again, then he reaches out and fouls Durant coming up the floor, and it's a take foul. Can't make those kind of mistakes. Two turnovers in the last three possessions on Anthony Edwards. That's a take foul, which gives Durant an automatic point, the three free throw line, and it'll be ball out of bounds for Phoenix. Last 19 games of the regular season, the Wolves ranked 29th in first quarter net rating. They've outscored their opponents in an opening quarter just five of those 19 games. And in that stretch, they're dead last in offensive rating. 25th in shooting, 30th in turnovers, 26th in defense, 28th in rebounding. You get the idea. The Wolves have struggled in first quarters over the last 19 games. The prior 37 games to that, they were number one. Here's Nurkic getting free inside, rises and hammers. Suns lead 7-4. Talk about a role reversal from first, from mid-December to early March to 29th since early March. Runner baseline, Conley, no, but an offensive rebound. Rudy Gobert for the offensive rebound and the slam putback. 7-6, the NBA's second leading offensive rebounder, Rudy Gobert, averaging close to four a game. There's Durant right side. Off the Nurkic screen, got a step on Towns, runs it up in the paint, that rattles around, no. Nurkic offensive rebound, a whistle stops play, and a loose ball foul will go against the Timberwolves. I believe that'll go against Rudy Gobert, and that'll be his first. Rudy was pretty adamant he did not commit a foul there. Mike Conley stepped in and sort of grabbed his jersey and said, hey, calmed him down. Ben Taylor, Mark Davis, And our third official is Aaron Smith, the umpire. Here's Beal off the Nurkic screen, lost the dribble, got it back, drives on Rudy, kick back out to Nurkic, left angle three on the way, no off the back iron. Rebound tapped around by Rudy, controlled by Anthony Edwards. Timberwolves down by one. Ant right of the lane, bumped by Grayson Allen. That draws a whistle. And Conley knocked down the resulting three in the corner, but it came well after the whistle had sounded. So sideline out of bounds. Allen picks up his first personal foul. 
Ant will trigger in. Comes in to Mike Conley, who averaged 11.6 assists per game in the regular season. Here's Towns, 22 a night for Carl. Back to Mike against Grayson Allen. Trying to take him off the dribble with the left hand. In the lane, runs it up, the shot short. Nurkic clears the rebound. Conley hit the deck, it's five on four momentarily coming back. Here's Booker around the Nurkic screen up top. Snakes his way to the free throw line, in the paint, runs it up off glass. Shot blocked from behind by Jaden McDaniels. Rudy Gobert saves the rebound in the corner to Mike Conley. Here come the Wolves on the push, down by one. Ant for the lead, right angle three. He got it. Anthony Edwards knocks down an angle three. He's a 38% three-point shooter in the postseason. He's put the Wolves up 9-7. Phoenix has missed three straight shots as Beal brings it up, rejects the Nurkic screen, drives left of the lane along the baseline to Booker in the corner. Booker's got the white headband on, so does Bradley Beal. Booker on the attack against McDaniel, shuffles it off to Nurkic, shoves off on Rudy, pivots one, swings back to his right hand, missed the jump hook. Jaden McDaniels has the rebound in traffic. Jaden's been active and aggressive early. Here's Mike on the push, top of the key, in the lane, skids to a stop, falls away on the jumper, it's no good. The rebound tapped out by Rudy. Conley's got it. Oh, he got bumped from behind by Nurkic and there was no call. Mike with a great hesitation, Nurkic was all over his back, no call. Here's Duran against McDaniels, a drive, finish off the glass, he got it. Another tough two for Durant. Leads all scores with seven. His three field goals have been as difficult as you can get. Tied at nine, five gone, seven left to play opening quarter. Ant dribbles off the cat screen, fires on a three, it was halfway down, it popped out. Here's Grayson Allen, they hit ahead to Durant right side in front of his own bench, guarded by Towns. Durant holds, now he goes between the legs with left hand to dribble, pull up, free throw on extended, jumper is good. Four of six shooting for KD. Suns go up 11 to nine. Considering the Wolves have been blown out in three prior first quarters, it's been a great start for them. Here's Towns, left side, little shake on Durant. Now backs him down. Here comes the double over his shoulder. Rudy cutting down Main Street, makes the catch and jams it for two. We're tied at 11 midway through the opening quarter of game one. Timberwolves and Suns nodded at 11. The fans are on their feet. They've been on their feet the entire opening quarter so far. We're just getting going on the Timberwolves radio network. Life's a game. You better be ready for it. Dynamic Drips can give your body what it needs to perform at its very best through mobile IV infusion therapy. A professionally trained nurse comes directly to you, your office, your home, your couch even. Their team administers an IV drip, loading your body with essential hydration and vitamins you think you've been getting but desperately need. Vitamin C, vitamin B, calcium, magnesium. Are you getting all those? Dynamic Drips IV can get you all that and so much more directly into your body. See how good your body can feel. Dynamic Drips. Remembering all the ways Minnesota lottery dollars help our state is easy. Just think of this acronym, Beaches Treat Cows. It stands for Bees, Education, Agriculture, Canoeing, Habitats, Endangered Species, Transit, Renewable Energy, Air Quality, Trails, Conservation, Outreach, Water, and Sustainability. See, it's easy. Since 1990, the Minnesota Lottery has raised nearly $4 billion to help our very own Beaches Treat Cows. So say I'm in and play your part in helping Minnesota. At Target, we're home court advantage for the hometown sports fans. And with the Timberwolves season in full gear, we're here to help you gear up and make your game day prep a slam dunk. Hear that? That's what you call a buzzer-beating three-pointer for the win. Time to dish up your famous nachos or put a full-court press on some jalapeno poppers. Then serve up some sweet desserts to celebrate the W. However you do game day, we're here for it at Target and Target.com. Hello, I'm Matt Meyer, fifth generation farmer from Clearwater, Minnesota, and owner of Thousand Hills Lifetime Grazed Grass-Fed Beef. We believe the tastiest, most nutritious beef comes from cattle that are regeneratively grazed for their lifetime. Never confined to a feedlot, never fed GMO plants or grains, and not exposed to chemical pesticides like glyphosate. Please find our grass-fed beef at Coburn's and your local food co-op. Thousand Hills Lifetime Grazed, nourishing soil, plants, cattle, and people by holistically grazing cattle for their lifetime. In the three meetings in the regular season, the Wolves fell behind by as many as 14 in game one in the opening quarter. They fell behind by as many as 17 
in the first quarter in game two, and by as many as 22 in the first quarter of game three. So far, they're right with the Suns, tied at 11. Timberwolves have shot five of 12 from the field. They do have a couple of turnovers, and in three games in the opening quarters against the Suns, they've been averaging 6.7 turnovers per game. Of course, they had 11 last Sunday in the regular season finale. Nine first quarter points for Kevin Durant. He's four of six shooting, but I'm telling you, the four shots he's made, the Wolves can't complain about the defense that they played on him. They made him make tough twos. Timberwolves getting five points from Anthony Edwards. They've gotten four from Rudy Gobert, two from Jaden McDaniels, who's been active. Two points, two rebounds, one block shot so far. Cat has not scored yet in the opening six minutes. Timberwolves without a change. They've got Conley, Edwards, McDaniels, Townsend, Gobert on the floor. Frank Vogel looks to probably go, well, we'll see how deep he goes, but you would think three deep off his bench. He has not made a change thus far. Suns have possession of the ball. They'll bring it up here from left to right. Bradley Beal picked up by Anthony Edwards off a Nurkic screen at midcourt. Beal on the season averaging 18 a game. Lowers the shoulder, right-handed dribble into the paint, bottled up by Ant. Bounce off to Nurkic. Nurkic holds back towards Durant, getting free of Towns. The reverse layup, no good. That was effective by Rudy Gobert. Durant doesn't say anything, but he looks over at Mark Davis, said, where was the foul? He said that with a look. Here's Ant stepping through, took some contact, still floats up the shot, and it drops in. And the Timberwolves have the lead, 2-0. I should say have the lead, 13-11 by two. And the Wolves force a turnover. Durant got stripped inside. Here's Ant, left-handed dribble on the attack. Hangs in the lane, the shot blocked by Nurkic. Nurkic will drop it back. Here's Booker on the push. In the paint, spins on Conley against Towns. Double clutches, tried to pass it to Nurkic. It got deflected. Nurkic able to control and then goes to the other side of the rim to lay it up and in. We're tied at 13. 520 left to go in the opening quarter. Both teams, 6 of 14 shooting. This is what you, for a Wolves perspective, we're hoping for. Two more competitive teams. Here's Towns, baseline, floater with the right hand is well short. Durant clutches the rebound. Here's Booker on the push, top of the key, angles out to the left wing, beyond the arc, turns, fires on the three and hits it. Devin Booker, 36% from beyond the arc this season. He'll take six attempts per game. And Booker's had himself just a little bit of success against the Wolves. His teams have won the last 10 meetings and 13 of the last 14. Along those lines, Bradley Beal has won eight straight games against Minnesota. Those are troubling streaks because those don't overlap much. McDaniels falling to the floor in the lane, throws up a shot, it's an air ball, but it acts as a perfect alley-oop to Rudy Gobert. We'll see if he gets credit for the assist or if it's a shot attempt. It'll go down as a shot attempt. Beal off the Nurkic screen, left elbow, pivot, sits it back inside. Nurkic bumped by Gobert, still puts it up and in with the right hand. He never controlled it after he lost it off the dribble. Just kind of jokic it, grabbed it with one hand. The old water polo skills. Rudy takes the feed from Ant and then uh, lost it off his leg out of bounds. Tough feed by Anthony Edwards there. So Nikhil Alexander-Walker will check in. So will Nas Reed. And Frank Vogel will go to his bench too. Eric Gordon's in, Royce O'Neal is in, and Drew Eubanks is in. We did not see Gordon last Sunday. He missed the game with a migraine. But he is good to go here tonight. So it's Booker and Durant, the two starters out there, with O'Neal, Eubanks, and Eric Gordon. Here's Booker swirling to the right side, gets to the nail, shoves off on Nas, frees himself with a 14-foot fall away, and that's almost automatic. So it makes guarding guys like Booker so difficult. If you allow them to have that shove off to create some space, then they fall away. I mean, those 14-footers are like layups for them. Nikhil, great attack from the right wing. Comes in the lane with a left hand and finishes off the glass for two. 20 to 17, the Suns lead by three. The Suns have now hit nine of 17 shots. That's 53%. Booker off the Eubank screen. Guarded by Gobert inside. Now Durant in the corner, guarded by McDaniels. Starts to back him down, shields off with the right hand, and a whistle stops play, and a foul against Jaden McDaniels. Mark Davis saw that McDaniels clutched the back of Durant's jersey, and you can't do that. You cannot get a fistful of jersey in this game. Not this particular game, in the NBA game. Officials see that, it's an automatic call. Automatic. First foul on McDaniels. 
And he'll come to the bench as Kyle Anderson checks in. So Anderson against Durant. They go into Durant against Kyle Anderson. Backing him down to the mid post. Spins to the baseline. Tough two again. A hand right in his face, but it just doesn't matter against a guy like Durant. He's got 11, five of nine from the field. Durant in the postseason. He's only the third leading scorer in NBA history amongst players that have played 50 or more postseason games. And the drive, good feed to the corner. Nikhil open for the triple and he buries it. Now Ant has turned it over twice doing the same thing, driving into traffic, but this time he got the pass away. Here's Booker trying to respond to right angle three. No, Rudy clears the rebound. And it's a two point game. Suns 22, Timberwolves 20. 235 left to go opening quarter. Ant with it right side, off the Rudy screen, looking to attack Royce O'Neal. 12 on the shot clock, now to Nas. Left angle three, it's on its way. It's online and it drops in. Nas Reed got it off with Eric Gordon contesting heavily. Timberwolves retake the lead, 23-22. We've had six lead changes. We've had five ties here in the opening quarter. Durant to the baseline, threw it to the corner, deflected by Nas Reed out of bounds. Under three minute break comes with 2.10 left to go in the opening quarter. And we have got ourselves a series. 23-22, the Wolves by one. Late in the opening quarter on the Minnesota Timberwolves Radio Network. Bring the fun to family time with a visit to Treasure Island Resort and Casino. Start by making a splash and memories at the lagoon. Our indoor water park includes a lazy river, an activity pool, and more exciting features. Then hit the lanes at Island Extreme Bowl for some family-friendly competition before you head to our luxurious hotel for a relaxing night away. Book your stay now at TICasino.com. Treasure Island Resort and Casino. Destination fun. Dear road rivals, let's talk about extra. Toyota offers tons of extra with Toyota Care. Our no-cost maintenance plan good for two years or 25,000 miles. No-cost oil changes, no-cost tire rotations, no-cost fluid level adjustments, and more. That's a whole lot of extra at no cost from Toyota. Nissan and Ford charge extra for maintenance. And that's the kind of extra nobody needs. Try harder. Toyota. Based on manufacturer's data as of 319-2024, covers normal factory scheduled service for two years or 25,000 miles, whichever occurs first. See participating dealer for coverage details. Cal Soderquist with a scoreboard update brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Visit toyota.com today. Let's go places. This game you're tuned to right now, part of a triple header here today as we get the postseason underway officially later tonight. The defending champion Denver Nuggets will match up against the team they saw in the conference finals last year on their way to that title. LeBron James and the L.A. Lakers, that one tips off at 7.30 Central Time from the Mile High City. We have a final from earlier today as well. Cleveland Cavaliers captured a 97-83 win at home against the Magic, so they take a 1-0 series lead. What about the action last night? We wrapped up the play-in tournament. That featured, of course, the Chicago Bulls losing in Miami 112-91 to and the New Orleans Pelicans, thanks partially to a strong performance from their second unit, they got a 105-98 win over the Kings. Here's Brandon Ingram on that energy and heart from the bench. It just feels like they always um, in the right spots at the right time, and they always bring energy. Jose always brings in energy. He changes the game. Najee changes the game in a big way on the defensive side and pushing the pace and, you know, they got a high IQ so they find the right pass on the floor and they know when to go score. So those are the type of guys I want to be around. We feel like we're from the same place, feel like I've known them for a while. We're similar to each other, so we go out and we show heart when we go on the floor. Yeah, Ingram mentioned uh, Jose Alvarado, Najee Marshall, those two, and Larry Nance Jr. combined for 34 points and 15 rebounds off the bench. Pels get the win. It earns them a uh, first-round matchup with the Oklahoma City Thunder. Let's go back to Alan Horton. All right, Cal, thank you very much. 23-22, Timberwolves lead the Suns by one. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification all across the Minnesota Timberwolves radio network. Along with studio host and executive producer Cal Soderquist, I'm Alan Horton from a sold-out Target Center here in downtown Minneapolis. A brisk late April afternoon, a busy day in downtown Minneapolis with the Twins in action against the Tigers across the street and the Wolves and Suns game one of their best of seven first-round playoff series. Cat 
has yet to connect for the Timberwolves, but he's going to be a big part of this series, says Chris Finch and Anthony Edwards. It's going to be huge. You know, he's, uh, I think it's, you know we have to find ways to get more out of him. i got to do a better job of getting the ball into his hands. Uh, I didn't do a good job of that on Sunday. So, you know, he's a huge piece for us, and we got to use, it, use him better. I see Cat being the MVP of the series if we win it um, because – like I said, they're gonna put two and three on me, and he's he's the best player on the team. So they're gonna put two two and three on me, and you need the best player on the team with one on one. Um, I think that's a that's something that we live for. Yeah, he takes the responsibility on defense, and if he does a great job, then we'll come out on top. Chris Finch, Anthony Edwards on Carl Anthony Towns and his potential impact in this series. Suns have it out of the timeout. Still 23-22. Booker on the floor with Gordon O'Neal, Eubanks, and Durant. Off the high Eubanks screen, and then Booker tried to split two defenders. Nikhil knocked the ball away. Nas scoops it up, drives it on Gordon. Got stripped at the rim. He goes out of bounds off Gordon. It'll stay Timberwolves basketball. A minute 28 left to go in the first quarter. Timberwolves currently on a 6-0 run to give them that one-point lead. There have been six lead changes, five ties. Durant's got 11, Timberwolves more balanced, Ant was seven, Gobert was six, Nikhil with five off the bench in just three minutes of play. Wolves bench, by the way, good start, eight points, three of three shooting. Nikhil to trigger in along the baseline, directing traffic, bounces it off to Cat in the corner against O'Neal. Couple of dribbles, 15 to shoot, he sees a double, kicks out to the angle and Nas, puts on the deck, drives into the cup, shot block, Eubanks is gonna get called for a goal 10. Mark Davis, the veteran crew chief, makes the call. It'll be an 8-0 Timberwolves run, and they have their largest lead of the game so far, up by three. Nas has five. Good start for Nikhil, good start for Nas Reed. Remember, Nas missed the entire postseason last year with a broken hand that he suffered, broken wrist, I should say, in Phoenix late in the year. Of course, Jaden McDaniels also missed that first round payoff series against Denver as O'Neal cashes in on the right wing three. Royce O'Neal, 37%. He'll take five three point attempts per game. He has tied in his 25. Three threes for the Wolves, two for the Suns. The Wolves have been dominated, not only in the three games in the regular season, but at the three point line specifically. And good step through, got the shot off. Oh, they're going to whistle in for an offensive foul. That's his second foul of the game boy he stepped through and normally when you step through and get around your hip around the defender that's a normally nine times out of ten that's a block oh that's that's a bad call by mark davis i think Ant stepped through and almost got past him that's either a no call or a block that's a tough break for Ant. he's going to come out of the game with 46 seconds left Jaden McDaniels back in. Timberwolves and Suns in game one, tied at 25. Here's Beal, back on the floor, up into the front court, guarded by Kyle Anderson. Working to the right side, up top, O'Neal. Fakes out, Nas drives in, up off last, no. Sh rebound loose, Cat's got it. Did a nice job boxing out Eubanks and controlling the rebound. Nikhil up into the front court with 24 seconds left to go in the opening quarter. Right side, Towns, one dribble into the paint, splits your defenders, bank shot, oh, how'd that not drop? It popped out, Cat drew the whistle. He'll go to the free throw line for two shots. Well, you get the sense in this opening quarter that this game is going to be called like so many of the games post All-Star break across the league. They are letting a lot of stuff go. Phoenix has attempted one free throw attempt in this game and they're number one in the NBA in getting to the free throw line. These are the first free throws the Wolves are attempting, and they're eighth best in getting to the free throw line over the course of the regular season. Free throw is good. One point, three rebounds, one assist, no fouls, and no turnovers on Carl Anthony Towns. Even though he's only got one point, I would say this is a very good start for Carl Anthony Towns. He is seeing doubles almost every time he touches the ball. He's making the right pass, not the flashy pass. Second free throw coming up to give the Wolves a two-point lead with 19.2 seconds left. It's good. 27-25. Beal will bring it up here for the Suns. Shot clock is off. 
Timberwolves do have a foul to get. Here's O'Neal to the left side of Beal. Beal guarded by Nikhil, off to Booker. Right back to Beal up top. Now O'Neal takes the pass, fires on the three, and hits it at the buzzer. Royce O'Neal with a couple of late threes here in the corner to put the Suns up 1-28-27. But compared to the regular season, the Wolves got outscored by 13.3 points per first quarter. 13.3, they're only down one here at game one after one. 2827 Phoenix on the Timberwolves Radio Network. Is it possible to predict the unpredictable? Could surgeons use a patient's own anatomy to create 3D printed life size organ models to map out challenges ahead of time, making surgery more precise, efficient, and less invasive? Is it possible? It already is. Because every day we're doing what's never been done. Learn more at mayoclinic.org slash possible. Mayo Clinic. You know where to go. The NBA playoffs are here. And we all know playoff mode is a thing. Listen to the evidence. Playoff crowds are going wild. Playoff players are lighting up the court. Even your speakers are in playoff mode. Okay, we'll take it down a notch, but just a notch. Because this is the turn it up to 11 NBA playoffs. Playoff mode is clearly a thing. The NBA playoffs presented by Google Pixel continue on ABC, ESPN, TNT, and NBA TV. Wolves fans want to get playoff tickets right now? Skating offensive rebound. Put back hammer. Yes! Become a 2024-25 season member, and you can pick out your seats for the 2024 playoffs today. Out to McKeel in the corner. A three ball splashes home! Memberships feature phenomenal perks like 25% off concessions and team merch at every Wolves home game. Plus, pay for your membership monthly. You gotta love it! Learn more at Timberwolves.com slash memberships. When you drive a vehicle so reliable it's backed by a 10-year, 100,000-mile limited warranty, you stop thinking about what you can't do and start doing what you never thought possible. Visit your local Kia dealer today to see what you're capable of in a vehicle that inspires confidence around every corner. Kia. Movement that inspires. Call 800-333-4KIA for details. Always drive safely. Limited inventory available. Warranties include 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain and 5-year, 60,000-mile basic. Warranties are limited. See retailer for details. You're listening to the Timberwolves Radio Network. Welcome back inside Target Center. One quarter in the books of game one. The Suns lead the Timberwolves 28-27. Alan Horton along with you. Game two of this series is coming up on Tuesday night. It'll be a 6.30 Central time start. Game three is Friday in Phoenix. Game four, Sunday at Phoenix. Suns hit five straight shots at one point in that opening quarter, but shot just seven of 18 around that. They shot 52% overall, three of six from deep. They got a couple of Royce O'Neal threes at the end of the quarter, and they got a five for nine shooting performance from Kevin Durant, although he was, I think he missed his final three shots of the quarter. So he has 11. Ant's got seven points, three of five shooting. He does have all four of Minnesota's turnovers. Bulls bench has played well. They're a combined plus nine. They've scored 10 points, and they've hit four of six, including two of three from long range. Kyle Anderson was part of that bench brigade. He talked about how the playoffs, much more interesting. Yeah, that's the fun thing about the playoffs. You get to make those adjustments. You get to see what you really did wrong in those three losses, and then you go out and, and, and throw your first punch, and after game one, we're going to have to make more adjustments. They're going to have to make adjustments, and it's, it's a chess match. So that's, that's what's fun about the playoffs. Timberwolves did adjust some of their matchups defensively, and so far through one quarter, that made a difference. Durant against Carl Anthony Towns. Mike Conley chasing around Grayson Allen, and then Ant against Bradley Beal. Shot by Mike Conley up top for three. No, it rims around, pops out, and Nikhil is there to knock it in for two and put the Timberwolves up 29-28. Beal off the Nurkic screen, gets into the paint. Beal with a right-handed scoop off the glass, puts Phoenix back in front, 30-29. Two of the best second quarter teams in the NBA matching up. Suns fifth best, Wolves eighth best. Here's Nas Reed up top, crossover on Eric Gordon, kick out Kyle Anderson, runs it up off glass, counted for two. KA connects. Wolves go back up 31 30. 
10 lead changes, six ties. Timberwolves' largest lead has been three. Phoenix has been up by as many as five. Nurkic back on the floor, right wing straddling the three-point line. Hand off to Beal, curls off the Nurkic screen, which is a big one. Out to Gordon, left corner opposite the Suns bench, drives in the paint, shuffled his feet, and it's a travel. I didn't think anybody saw it, but finally the whistle sounded. And that is Ben Taylor who made the call. Timberwolves bring it back up here, up by one. Mike Conley manning the point with Nikhil, Kyle, Nas, and Rudy. A whistle stops play and a foul will be charged to the Suns. Aaron Gordon picks that one up, his first personal foul. Gordon now in his 16th season out of Indiana, 35 years of age. He was drafted seventh overall by the Clippers the year after Mike Conley was taken fifth. Check that, fourth by Memphis. Here's Kyle in the lane, fall away from 13 feet, no. Grayson Allen has the rebound. Allen has not attempted a shot so far, and he's played nine minutes. The NBA's leading three-point shooter. Here's Royce O'Neal, who's got, knocked out a couple of threes so far. Off the Nurkic screen, another whistle, this one against the Timberwolves. Kyle Anderson tried to fight over the top of that Nurkic screen, and there was too much contact there for the liking of Mark Davis. 31-30, early stages, second quarter. And another whistle as the ball got knocked out of bounds in a big collision. As Kyle Anderson comes up holding his right hip, Bradley Beal's a little bit slow in getting up. They mentioned two top 10 second quarter teams. The Suns get it done with their offense, which is sixth best in second quarters. The Wolves have the fifth best defense in second quarters. And Kyle is kind of hobbling there with his right hip. And he's going to come out. Monte Morris will come in. So that was one of the lesser questions that we had about the Timberwolves rotation heading into this series. Chris Finch loves to go a nine-man rotation. Jordan McLaughlin, Monte Morris basically battling for that ninth spot. And Monte gets the call here. It might be because of Kyle Anderson potentially being a little bit injured there. 32-31 after the Beal free throws. Here's Rudy, a handoff to Conley, baseline drive, up top to Nas. He'll take a run into the paint, runs up the shot, no, but he was so aggressive, he drew the foul there. And he'll go against Nurkic, and that'll be his first. Good, aggressive drive by Nas, who has played, you know, a key to Nas's game is playing with tempo, playing with aggression, and playing with a up-tempo and pace, but not too much. There's a fine line there. In the last couple of games, Nas has been getting going a little too quickly and putting himself in some bad situations. But so far tonight, he's gotten off to a good start. I always think it's crucial for most players, but for Nas in particular, knock down that first shot. He's two of three shooting, and two of two at the free throw line. Wolves are four for four at the stripe. Suns one of two. Timberwolves bench right now, 16 points, six of nine shooting. That's where the Wolves feel like they have an advantage against Phoenix. Nikhil picks the pocket of Bradley Beal, tracks down the loose ball in the front court. Looks for the trailer, it's Nas, he'll hoist the three. It's long, off the back iron, Eric Gordon up high for the rebound. Suns have turned it over four times, so have the Wolves. Eric Gordon, perimeter left, guarded by Conley. Gordon working against Mike, top of the key, now down the lane, off to Nurkic, hanging out in the dunker spot. Nurkic holds back to the basket, stripped by Gobert. Nurkic now feeds Beal on the run, down the lane, double clutches up with left hand, couldn't get it to drop. Nikhil's got the rebound, grab it, go up the center of the floor. Top of the key, the corner Nas, great pump fake. Moves on O'Neal, into the paint, drops it up top. Nikhil straight away three, offline, no. Rebound out of bounds, that's Timberwolves basketball. Boy, really heads up play by Nas, and that goes back to what I was talking about, playing under control, not forcing up that three, which likely would have gotten blocked by Royce O'Neal, just launched himself into the stratosphere to try to block the potential shot. And then Nas drove, didn't have it, kicked out to Nikhil for a better shot attempt. And the Wolves will take that shot by Nikhil any day of the week. Jaden McDaniels in. Nas Reed will take a seat. 16 bench points for the Timberwolves, six for the Suns. McDaniels around Durant, in the lane, hangs on the shot and hits. Timberwolves are up by three, they've matched their largest lead of the game. 
There's still 9.15 left to go in the second quarter. Here's Grayson Allen, catch and shoot right wing three. That's in and out, no. Timberwolves have the rebound. Jaden McDaniels with a hop, skip, and a jump across the timeline. Feeds Demonte Morris, who looks for the three, missed it. Rebound, Grayson Allen. Allen comes back the way for the Suns, who are on their icon purple jersey. Suns across their front of their chest in white. Nurkic, top of the key. Backdoor, finds Beal. He'll hang, he'll hit. That's twice Nurkic has found a backdoor cut from one of his teammates. The Wolves want to match up when Nurkic has the ball. They're not doubling. They're rushing to all the other four guys on the floor, but you can't get beat back door. And twice that's happened. One time they've gotten burned. The Keel left side three on the way. That drops in. The Keel already with 10 here in the first half. 38-34. The Keel Alexander Walker. Just his seventh postseason game. Here's back door. Durant makes the catch against McDaniels. Pulls up on the J. It's no good. The Wolves come back the other way. Here's Monte Morris with it up top on a dribble handoff to McDaniels. From right to left, McDaniels bumps by Beal. Into the paint, rises up, tough two. It's an air ball. Rudy's got it. Rudy under the basket, flips it up toward the rim. It's an air pad shot. The rebound kicked around out of bounds. It's off Bradley Beal. Little State Timberwolves basketball. Ant comes back in with 7.55 left to go second quarter. What a stint by Nikhil Alexander-Walker. 10 points, two rebounds in eight minutes. 7.55 left to go first half of the Wolves lead by four, 38-34. Wolves are getting outshot 52% to 44%. The Wolves have attempted five more shots. Conley will trigger in baseline. Shot clock at five under the basket. They tried to force it to McDaniels, but a reach in foul. It's going to be number two on Nurkic. Well, that's a big call by Ben Taylor. It's number three against the Suns here in the quarter. Timberwolves have committed two team fouls. Well, it's not against Nurkic, it's against Booker. And he had his. It, you know, I talked about earlier Jaden getting called for grabbing a fistful of jersey. It's an automatic call. Well, if you also grab around somebody's waist. It's just going to be a call every time. Ant with it up top against Durant. Left-handed dribble to the nail. Drops it back out to Conley. It moves to his right. Switches back left hand. Spins at the free throw line. Tough fall away with a shot clock buzzer. And Mike beats it with a 16-foot fall away. 9-2. Timberwolves run. They lead by 6, 40 to 34. Booker wing left to O'Neal. Who fakes left and comes right. Back up top. Booker's got it again. Off the Nurkic screen. Bounce pass. Nurkic inside turn. Lay it good. And a foul. Oh, Mike committed it from behind. He was trying to get out of the way, but he ended up touching Nurkic just enough for Ben Taylor to blow the whistle. Got to let that instinct go. Right, Nurkic, you're not stopping the seven-footer when he's right at the rim to lay it in for two. for Nurkic and Rudy Gobert claims the rebound. That's his ninth board of the game. Timberwolves doubling up the Suns on the glass, 20 to 10. Phoenix fifth best in rebound differential, almost plus three per game. Timberwolves also in the top 10. Here's McDaniels, bowls over a defender, hangs, kicks out. Here's Monte Morris. Monte back to Jaden in the corner, being aggressive, drives in, tried to dish it off to Rudy, and got deflected, loose on the floor. Booker's got it, and a whistle. Booker still being tied up by McDaniels. The whistle continues to blow. Jaden's still fighting for it. And they're going to get Jaden on the foul. So it'll be number two on Jaden McDaniels. And a timeout has been called. Under seven minute break to go here in the second quarter. Comes with 6.59. 40 40-36. The Timberwolves lead the Suns in game one by four on the Timberwolves radio network. Hello, I'm Matt Meyer, fifth generation farmer from Clearwater, Minnesota, and owner of Thousand Hills Lifetime Grazed Grass Fed Beef. We believe the tastiest, most nutritious beef comes from cattle that are regeneratively grazed for their lifetime. Never confined to a feedlot, never fed GMO plants or grains, and not exposed to chemical pesticides like glyphosate. Please find our grass fed beef at Coburn's and your local food co op. Thousand Hills Lifetime Grazed, nourishing soil, plants, cattle, and people. 
by holistically grazing cattle for their lifetime. If you've got the right tools and the friendly people at U.S. Bank in your corner, making smarter money choices is a piece of cake. If only our tools and helpful advisors could have helped you avoid some of those not-so-smart choices in life. Like that time you tried to pick up unicycling. Whoa, whoa, coming through! Or when you thought it'd be okay to pet that squirrel in the park. Good squirrel. Good squirrel. <laughs> While we can't help you with all that, we can help you bank smartly at usbank.com slash smarter together. Member FDIC. TimberTech and TimberTech.com. Not only are the best in the business, but the decks they develop and the decks they build are the highest of quality. In fact, you will endure a lifetime of happiness with that deck with TimberTech. So ask for TimberTech when putting together your next project, and that also can include porches. TimberTech.com is where you find the free samples. Once again, start at TimberTech.com. We are professionals. We are family and friends. We are volunteers. We are community partners. We are a team dedicated to helping you succeed. We help protect and serve America's businesses. When you need us, we're here to help. At Federated Mutual Insurance Company, it's our business to protect yours. Rated a superior by AM Best Company. Quarter of game one, the Timberwolves lead the Suns 40 to 36. Alan Horton along with you from Packed House here in downtown Minneapolis. The Target Center is rocking. It's a complete whiteout here at the arena. 40 to 36, the Timberwolves lead by four. We've had 12 lead changes, seven ties. Still Durant with 11. All those came in the opening quarter to lead the way for the Suns. 10 for Nikhil Alexander-Walker. All those came in an eight-minute span coming off the bench. Timberwolves bench outscoring the Suns bench 19 to six here in this game. Timberwolves all time in game ones, just two and 11. Now, a big part of that is because they've only played four home games in franchise history in game one. But their 2-11 record in game once is the worst record in game once in NBA history. Meanwhile, for the Suns, they're 33 and 30. As they are reaching the postseason for the 33rd time in 56 years of their franchise history. Suns have hosted a ton of game ones. They're 25 and 9 at home in game ones. But on the road, just eight and 21, and they lost their last two after winning six in a row. The Timberwolves, despite that two and 11 record, one of those wins came two years ago in Memphis when they took on the second seed of Memphis Grizzlies, losing in six games. Booker works to the corner against Rudy Gobert. Lost the dribble, got it back. Five to shoot, around his back, baseline drive, reverse layup, he got it. What a tough two by Devin Booker. I mean, Rudy made him do everything on that possession, but missed the shot. 40 to 38. Monte Morris, Jaden McDaniels, Anthony Edwards, Towns, and Gobert. They get it to Cat. Quickly moves on Durant baseline, runs up the shot. Off glass, count into foul. He went quick. That was the key. The double couldn't come. And Durant was caught off balance. Cat has more strength than Kevin Durant. He just muscled him up chest to chest. And then banked it in. That's his first field goal of the game. Free throw coming up as Nas Reed checks in, and Rudy Gobert will sit down. This will slide Cat to the five. Eubanks is in the game right now. I said earlier Nurkic had his second. That foul actually got charged to Booker, so Nurkic only has one. Nobody has more than one foul in Suns Purple. Timberwolves white, McDaniels has two, Edwards has two, and Kyle Anderson with two. So the free throw is good, Cat caps off the three point play. In the regular season he went 35 of 39 on his in one free throws. A hefty 90%. 43-38, Timberwolves were a good and one team. Seventh most and one opportunities, fifth most makes on the free throws. Booker one on one, top of the key, off the back iron, shot no, and Ant's got the rebound. Terrific defense by Monte Morris. 
That was a zero pass possession. Here's Ant dribbling up into a three that comes up short. That was a zero pass possession. Timberwolves by five. Their largest lead has been six. Suns have led by as many as five. Durant against Nas Reed. Out by the hash mark, gets a Eubank screen, switches on the cap. Durant with a left-handed dribble to the elbow, down the lane, scoops it up off last. Too strong, but a late whistle to foul. The crowd doesn't like it. It came late. Nas comes up hobbling. He may have landed on someone's foot inside. The crowd doesn't like it when they look at the replay either. But Durant earns a trip to the free throw line. Two shots coming up. And that foul gets charged to Carl Anthony Towns. That's his first. Durant 86% at the free throw line. Back irons the first one. Amongst players that have played 50 or more postseason games in their career, Michael Jordan is the NBA's all-time postseason scorer. Leader, 33.4 points a game. Allen Iverson is number two at 29.7. And then there's Kevin Durant at 29.4 points per game. KD hits one out of two. Durant making his 13th trip to the postseason. This is his 167th playoff game. Ridiculous numbers. Here's Cat moving quickly on Durant. The paint runs into Eubanks. He got his shot blocked. The rebound goes out of bounds. It'll stay Timberwolves basketball. Cat got in too deep there. He couldn't split Eubanks and Durant because he was under the basket. He's got to go up before that. The Wolves are fortunate to maintain possession. 43-39, up by four with possession. Right to left across your radio and to the baseline against Beal. Kick out, Nas up top against Royce O'Neal. Left-handed dribble gets by him, runs it up with the right hand off the back iron. No, and Royce O'Neal collects the rebound. Here come the Suns. Up on the left wing, it's Booker against McDaniels. Steps through, in the lane, got the shot blocked. It's out of bounds, it'll stay Suns basketball. I mean, there's a lot going on there. Booker's got both of his arms outstretched. They're going right toward Mark Davis, saying, where was the foul? Booker again letting him have it. Mark Davis allows him to complain without teeing him up. Inbound comes to Booker. He rises up for the jumper baseline. He forced that one. It came up short. Devin Booker is 3 of 10 shooting here in the first half. And up to the three-point line. Backs it out. He's got Beal on him. 15 to shoot. And now against Booker. Crosses him up. Left side of the floor. Baseline. Bump. Foul. Shot up. No, I don't think it would have been continuation. But Booker is now starting to get a little frustrated. And another whistle, and Ben Taylor says no more talking. We'll see how that goes. So Ben Taylor just went over to Frank Vogel and then Chris Finch. He says, I warned your team and I warned your team. Free throw for Ant, no good. It's the first miss of the night at the free throw line. Timberwolves basketball tonight against the Suns in game one brought to you by U.S. Bank. U.S. Bank is proud to be the official bank of the Timberwolves. And by Treasure Island Resort and Casino. Book your stay now. TICasino.com. Treasure Island. The exclusive casino partner of the Timberwolves. 44-39. So Kyle Anderson questionable to return with a right hip pointer. Here's Durant posting up Nikhil. Fades baseline, missed the shot. Wolves have been tremendous defensively here in the first half. The Suns are still shooting 49%. And three of seven from deep. And spin move into the paint. Rises the rim, missed the shot. Tip by low Carl Anthony Towns. And a timeout has been called by Frank Vogel. Boy, this game is as intense as it gets. 46-39, the Timberwolves lead by seven. 4.23 left to go in the second quarter. We step aside from a sold-out Target Center on the Timberwolves Radio Network. Keep the fun close to home with Treasure Island's two-night staycation hotel package. Start your stay by playing your way through our newest slots with $50 free slot play. Go beyond the gaming floor and experience more of the island with a $75 gift card to our restaurants, bars, gift shop, and more. When it's time to unwind, make your way to our luxurious hotel for two relaxing nights away. Book your stay now at TICasino.com. Treasure Island Resort and Casino. Destination fun. Catch Minnesota Timberwolves basketball. Edwards ahead of the pack and he throws it down. 
on Valley Sports. Oh, the block by Gobert. The clutch shots. He puts it up. Oh! The superstar highlights. Edwards, oh my! The can't miss moments. Conley, three ball, corner pocket. Another timely three by Mike Conley. Oh my goodness, that's Watch the Timberwolves on Valley Sports or stream on the Valley Sports app. Cal Soda Cooks with a scoreboard update brought to you again by your local Toyota dealers. Visit toyota.com today or just head to one of those dealerships in general. Uh, one final from this triple, head, triple header earlier this afternoon. Cleveland Cavaliers hosting game one of their first round series with the Orlando Magic. And this one was a tight ball game until late in the third. Uh, Cavs able to put together a 12-0 run from late in that third, qu- third quarter that stretched into the fourth. Allowed them to build a cushion uh, up to 20. And later in that final frame, Darius Garland putting the game away for good. Here's Mitchell with 14 on the clock. Donovan looking right corner to Struess. Struess against Bancaro. Struess bounce out front to Garland. Eight on the shot clock. Garland between his legs. Five on the clock. He's got it. Garland on the dribble. Steps right. Three ball. Bang! He's got it. He had Bancaro. The dagger! DG delivers 97 81 and an offensive foul called at the other end. They cruise to a 97 83 victory, so it's a 1 0 series lead. Game two of that series will take place on Monday, and of course, wrapping up the triple header later tonight, the defending champion Denver Nuggets will play host to LeBron and the Lakers. Back to Allen. All right, Cal, thank you very much. 423 left to go in an entertaining first half of play. Timberwolves lead the Suns. 46 to 39. The Wolves trailed by five early. They've led by as many as six, and now they are up seven. So their stat monitor a little bit late in, unless my math is off. Nope, that's seven points. Timberwolves are up by seven. Frank Vogel talked yesterday over at the uh, University of Minnesota where the Suns got to practice in about how their gap help really slowed down Anthony Edwards in the regular season, holding him to just 14 points over the three games. Yeah, I mean, I think we all understand the, you know, the threat that he carries, what kind of player he is. Uh, but that's, it's not just about uh, and The gaps are about whoever's, whoever has the ball. If, if Kat and uh, Nas or Conley or any of those guys are, are looking to attack the paint, we want to have a heavy gap presence. You know? And then you know, when the ball moves, we want to fire out of that and, and contest threes or prevent threes. You know? So it's just, just part of being a connected uh, multiple effort defense. You know, that, uh, you know, hopefully we're much stronger with those habits today than we were at the beginning of the season. And the big difference for the Timberwolves offensively is they're playing with much more purpose, much more pace. They're not sprinting up and down the floor, but I mean pace within their half-court offense. Durant out of the timeout, has it off the Nurkic screen, the elbow, the pull-up tough, too, is good over Anthony Edwards. It's incredible. 6 of 12 shooting, 14 points for Kevin Durant. I would say four or five of those six field goals have been heavily contested. Timberwolves from right to left at a five-point lead. Towns to a cutting. McDaniels drives in, scores in. There's a foul. There's number two on Big Nurk. Yusuf Nurkic picks up his second. Jaden McDaniels, six points, three rebounds. Give Pat the dime. That's his third assist of the night. Pat has done that without committing, only committing one foul and no turnovers. So the other thing that has jumped out off the stat monitor is the domination on the glass for the Wolves in this game. They're a plus 12 right now. Suns have 12 rebounds. The Wolves have 24. Timberwolves have won nine of their last 10 games when they out-rebound their opponents. That one loss was Sunday against the Suns. Wolves are 38-12 overall the season when they have the rebounding advantage in the game. Free throw is good. Nurkic down the lane to Durant in the corner. They zip it around to Beal at the angle. The three balls no good. Beal got knocked down. He thought he got fouled. Timberwolves have another rebound. 25-12 the advantage on the glass. Wolves from right to left here. Town surveys the seat. Dumps it inside to Ant. Rises up. Layup good. And that's another thing the Wolves are doing. They're having different players initiate the offense, not just Ant, where he gets bottled up and sees a wall of defenders. Durant in the lane, the shot no good from five feet, but he was fouled. There were a host of Wolves defenders defending that shot. We're gonna get Ant for his third. Three personal fouls on Anthony Edwards here in the first half. (laughs) 
free throw is good for Kevin Durant. You know, KD scored over 2,000 points this season for the Suns. Something he's now done for three separate teams is the only player in NBA history to do that. He scored over 2,000 in multiple seasons with the Thunder. He did it with the Golden State Warriors, and he's done it with Phoenix. LeBron has come close, but only done it with two of his teams. Two free throws good for Durant. He's got 16 points, 11 in the opening quarter, five here in the second. Timberwolves up by 8, 51-43. Towns up top against Bradley Beal. Starts to back him down the mid-post, spins middle, lost the ball. Grayson Allen scoops it up. Now to Booker at midcourt. On the push from left to right to the corner, and Durant back out. Allen, they like the matchup. Durant against Conley. McDaniels fainting on the double, doesn't want to leave Allen. Back out to Allen. They repost Durant. Again, back out to Allen. Now he'll hoist on the three. It's off wide, and the Wolves have the rebound. Terrific job by Jaden McDaniels. Fainting the double, getting back to contest against Grayson Allen. Multiple effort by Jaden McDaniels. Here's Towns, left of the lane. Got a double, and he got fouled. Booker came in. That should be another one on Booker. That'll be his third. That'll be free throws for... Did they get Nurkic on that one? Well, that'll work, too. That'll be his... Well, they did get Booker on the foul. Ben Taylor, I thought, made it 2-0, as in number 20, as in Yusuf Nurkic. The bottom line is, Cat will end up at the free throw line. And I think the blood rule is in effect. Infectious disease control. I believe they're attending to the right leg of Bradley Beal. He got a skinned up knee. So a delay in the action with 2.33 left to go in this first half. Now we did not mention the injury report tonight, brought to you by Mayo Clinic, your source for medical answers. That's because there's really no injuries to report. Timberwolves have a 15-man playoff roster. Two-way players are ineligible in the postseason. Wolves made Luca Garza one of those 15 players late in the season. Cat connects on the first free throw. So the Wolves 100% healthy on their 15-man roster. For the Suns, uh, they're without Damian Lee, who's not played the game all season. He's been out with right knee surgery uh, since October. And he's their only injury report. And because he's been out all season, not a part of the rotation or anything, it's almost not worth mentioning either. So basically, both teams come in healthy, both teams full of rest and preparation. And it's resulted in a really good first half. Two towns free throws, and the Wolves have a double-digit lead against the Suns. They have not had a double-digit lead in any of the three games between these two in the regular season. Beal with it up top from left to right with 2.20 to go in the second quarter. Beal against McDaniels, left-handed dribble in the paint, shoves off, paints on a 10-footer and hits it. Again, when you allow Booker and Beal and Durant too, just to get that off arm out a little bit, shoving off on a defender. I mean, it's just it's just too easy. Now O'Neal commits a foul away from the play on Carl Anthony Towns. That'll result in two free throws. The Wolves will take this. Cat's five for five at the line. Cat has seven of his nine points here in the second quarter. And I think both teams have the understanding right now with the way this game's gonna be called and how intense this is. It's gonna be tough sledding. You're not gonna see you know, 30, 35 points put up with by multiple guys. I mean, a really good game could be just 18 points, nine rebounds, four assists type of game. Counts perfect on the free throw, six for six. Making some money at the free throw line. How dominant were the Suns in the regular season? They led for 138 of the 144 minutes. That's 96%. Timberwolves trail by 10 or more points in all 72 of the second half minutes over the three games. Timberwolves led for two minutes in the three-game series. It was tied for four minutes. Most of that was uh, early on.
Nat now has nine in the quarter. He's got 11 for the game. He is the Wolves' leading scorer, but a balanced attack. Towns with 11, Edwards 10, Nikhil with 10. Eric Gordon, right side three on the way. That's offline. But Daniels taps the rebound. It goes off the head of Rudy right to Grayson Allen. Out to Bradley Beal up top. Beal holds, drives on Conley. Into the paint, skids to a stop, pass to the corner. Allen up fakes on Gobert, drives in, lowers the shoulder, bank shot. No, but a whistle and a foul. Wow. I don't know what else Rudy is supposed to do in that situation. I mean, Allen angles back into Gobert. Basically pushing Gobert under the backboard. He initiates the contact, and yet Rudy is called for that foul. That's a tough break. Two fouls on Gobert. Allen at the free throw line, where he's automatic, 88%. Sons are the sixth best free throw shooting team in the NBA, 81%. Again, they're number one in the league in free throw rate. Their ninth ranked offense is fueled by their shooting. Seventh best in effective field goal percentage. Eighth best in offensive rebounding. And number one in free throw rate. Surprisingly, the Suns are 25th in the league in turnover rate. They turn it over more than the Wolves do, yet that wasn't the story in the first three games in the regular season. Towns, jump hook in the lane, got it over Duran. Cat starting to find his rhythm. 13 points, three of seven shooting, but seven of seven at the stripe. Timberwolves back up by 10, 57-47. Grayson Allen, baseline drive across the lane. His pass out, stolen by Nikhil Alexander-Walker. Here's Nikhil on the move, down the lane, challenging Beal. The layup is good on the break. Nikhil's got a dozen. Timberwolves lead by 12. It's their largest lead of the half. Here's Durant, lowers the shoulder, drives. Kick out pass, stolen. Towns around his back to midcourt. Here's McDaniels. Jaden with it, drives in, hangs on the shot. No, but a whistle and a foul. McDaniels to the free throw line for two. 59-47, the Wolves up by 12. Back-to-back -back turnovers by the Suns. Allen with one, Durant with one. Six turnovers on the evening for Phoenix. The Wolves have turned those into six points, and they got a chance for two more with Jaden at the stripe. Free throw is good. Fans want to say big on playoff tickets? Become a new full or half season member and get member only seats at an average of 70% off single game prices. Memberships feature awesome benefits like discounts on concessions and team store merchandise at every Timberwolves home game. Learn more at Timberwolves.com slash memberships. Timberwolves.com slash memberships. Timberwolves convert the free throws. Jaden's got nine. The lead is 14. It's the largest of the half. Timberwolves 6-0 run over the last 34 seconds. Durant lowers the shoulder on the keel and kick to the corner. Allen, the three ball is going to be blocked intentionally by Gobert. You couldn't even hear the whistle. But Aaron Smith had a foul against the Wolves. And that's going to go against Mike Conley. That'll be his second personal foul. Yep, Mike was digging in against Durant. I thought that was a feed to the corner to Allen. It just Mike reached in, grabbed the wrist of Durant. That ball ricocheted to the corner for Grayson Allen. Durant knocks down the first free throw. Nurkic back in, Eric Gordon will take a seat. 61-48, Timberwolves lead the Suns by 13. Second free throw is good, 61-49. I don't want to tell the fans how to act, but I don't know that chanting underrated, no, overrated. That Kevin Durant is a wise move. Timberwolves at the offensive end with 30 seconds to go in the half. Nikhil off the Rudy screen, pops on a three, it's offline. Mike Conley sneaks in for the rebound. Shot clock reset to 14. Mike be on the arc, off the Rudy screen. Try to go back to Rudy, got deflected. Grayson Allen's got it. And then a foul by Mike Conley. Is this going to be a take foul? Mike will commit his third personal foul. The Wolves are in the penalty, so that'll be free throws for Grayson Allen. Mm. Have to be solid here over the final 30 seconds. Wolves with a costly turnover there, then add to it. Just giving up an automatic bucket to Grayson Allen. Two free throws, that's what that is. Grayson Allen. Three games against the Wolves. 
regular season averaged 19.6 rebounds, 56% shooting, and 10 of 16 from beyond the arc. But he wasn't just spotting up and hitting threes. He was just creating all over the place. Got to the free throw line 10 times in three games. Hitting runners, taking advantage of the matchup against either Nas Reed or Carl Anthony Towns. Two free throws are good, 10 point game. Shot clock goes dark. Suns don't have a foul to give. Mike Conley with it, crossing midcourt. Slipping the screen is Towns. Crossing over on Nurkic is Conley to the cup. Nurkic recovers and blocks the shot. The ball's now loose. Towns has it, puts it up at the buzzer. It does drop, but it comes after the horn had sounded. So, halftime here of game one. The third seeded Timberwolves lead the sixth seeded Suns 61 51, with the Timberwolves being paced by Carl Anthony Towns. 13 points, five boards, four dimes. 10 points for Anthony Edwards, 12 off the bench for Nikhil Alexander Walker. 18 for Durant to lead the Suns, but the Timberwolves up by 10 at the break. Cal Soderquist anchors your halftime coverage next, all across the Minnesota Timberwolves radio network. Why do we say I'm into basketball? Because basketball's exciting, like catching a t shirt from a cannon or feeling the pulse of a packed arena. There's the in your face slam dunks, the highlight reel alley oops, and the three point buzzer beaters. It all gets your heart pounding. Just like playing the lottery. Minnesota Lottery. I'm in. Must be 18 or older to play. Your lucky jersey. Your pack. Your hometown team. It's super fan season in Minneapolis downtown, so don't miss out on a minute of fun, friends, and nonstop excitement. From pregame meetups to postgame celebrations, be there for your favorite teams and the big wins. In Minneapolis, we play for the love of the game, and you're the best part of our story. Visit mplsdowntown.com to get your game on. See you downtown. Life's a game. You better be ready for it. Dynamic Drips can give your body what it needs to perform at its very best through mobile IV infusion therapy. A professionally trained nurse comes directly to you, your office, your home, your couch even. Their team administers an IV drip, loading your body with essential hydration and vitamins you think you've been getting but desperately need. Vitamin C, vitamin B, calcium, magnesium. Are you getting all those? Dynamic Drips IV can get you all that and so much more directly into your body. See how good your body can feel. Dynamic Drips. And spin move into the paint, rises to the rim, missed the shot. Tip follow Carl Anthony Towns. And a timeout has been called by Frank Vogel. Boy, this game is as intense as it gets. 46-39, the Timberwolves lead by seven. Carl Anthony Towns leading a balanced attack in the first half for the Timberwolves. He's got 13 points, five rebounds, four assists. 11 of his 13 came in that second quarter in what has been uh, a back and forth. First 24 minutes, Timberwolves found some separation over the final 10 minutes and change of that second quarter. And they, after getting dominated in all three of the uh, regular season matchups between the Wolves and Suns, it's the Timberwolves with a 10-point advantage at the half here in game one of this first-round clash. 61-51, Timberwolves with the lead. Welcome inside the Minnesota Lottery Halftime Show. Cal Soderquist here with you from our Target Center NBA Tonight studios. We'll dive into a few more of the first-half highlights in just a moment. We'll also uh, catch you up on some of the other action around the NBA as the playoffs officially get underway today. We've got one final from earlier this afternoon and two more contests set to take place later tonight. We'll tell you about those. Take a closer look at that first half box score. Timberwolves had a lead as large as 14 in this first half. They dominated the Suns on the glass with a 27 to 14 advantage on the boards, dominated Phoenix inside 34 to 22 edge in the paint and took much, much better care of the basketball, especially compared to those uh, 19 first half turnovers we saw in last Sunday's loss. So we'll take a Sharp look at the box score and then get all set for that third quarter uh, when we chat with an assistant coach before the second half gets started. Before, though, if we get to anything else, uh, we first have to pause and allow our stations 10 seconds all across the network to identify themselves right here on your home for Timberwolves basketball.
All right, let's get into some of the first half highlights. Game one between the Wolves and Suns here this afternoon at the Target Center. You know how the regular season series went in those three games, but that all matters not as we officially begin the second season here today. Anthony Edwards igniting a sold-out Target Center crowd early on as the Wolves able to create some offense from defense. Snakes his way to the free throw line, in the paint, runs it up off glass, shot blocked from behind by Jaden McDaniels. Rudy Gobert saves the rebound in the corner to Mike Conley. Here come the Wolves on the push, down by one, Ant for the lead, right angle three, he got it. Anthony Edwards knocks down, angle three. He's a 38% three-point shooter in the postseason. He's put the Wolves up 9-7. Building was jumping early for a whiteout. Everyone in attendance getting a uh, Timberwolves playoffs 2024 T-shirt and uh, donning those, creating quite an atmosphere picturesque uh, in the early moments of this one. Wolves and Suns traded punches early. Suns had built a five-point lead with about three and a half left in the first frame, but the Wolves putting together a rally, and it was fueled by their second unit. 12 on the shot clock, now to Nas. Left angle three, it's on its way. It's online, and it drops in. Nas Reed got it off with Eric Gordon contesting heavily. Timberwolves retake the lead, 23-22. Nas Reed hitting that triple, part of an 8-0 Timberwolves run. Both Nas and Nikhil Alexander-Walker with five each off the bench in that opening quarter. But the Suns, they grabbed a one-point advantage and carried it into the second frame. 28-27, Kevin Durant led the way for Phoenix with 11 in that opening quarter. And just a couple minutes into the second, Timberwolves had scratched and clawed their way to a four-point lead. Mike Conley helping extend that advantage. Conley moves to his right, switches back left hand, spins at the free throw line, tough fall away with a shot clock buzzer, and Mike beats it with a 16-foot fall away. 9-2, Timberwolves run. They lead by 640 to 34. So a six-point lead at that point. The lead had ballooned to 10 with just two and a half left in this first half. And after they were plagued by turnovers in last Sunday's loss to the Suns, the Timberwolves turning the tables here in the first half today. Grayson Allen, baseline drive across the lane. His pass out stolen by Nikhil Alexander-Walker. Here's Nikhil on the move, down the lane, challenging Beal. The layup is good on the break. Nikhil's got a dozen. Timberwolves lead by 12. It's their largest lead of the half. Eight Minnesota points off of seven Phoenix turnovers in this first half. These two teams technically played to a draw, each with seven turnovers in the opening 24 minutes. But for the Timberwolves, You'll take that. Uh, playing even in the turnovers, but out-rebounding Phoenix 27-14, to outscoring the Suns in the paint 34-22, to and how about a 16-2 to edge in second-chance points? Wolves gobbled up eight offensive rebounds in those first two quarters, so they led by as many as 14, and they've got a 10-point cushion as we sit here at the intermission. 61-51 to is your halftime score. Timberwolves have three different players in double figures. Carl Anthony Towns leading the way with 13, 11 of which came in that second quarter. He really stepped up as Anthony Edwards whistled for three personal fouls in the first half, so he was uh, really not out there for much of the second quarter. Nikhil Alexander-Walker also stepping up, played 14 minutes in the first half, 5 of 8 from the field, 12 points off the bench. How about three steals for Nikhil as well? And uh, Ant is the third player in double figures with 10 in his 16 first half minutes. Timberwolves, like we said, doing a lot of their damage inside. They shot just 4 of 14 from deep, but they shot 47% from the field. Suns, meanwhile, being paced by Kevin Durant and his 18 points. He's the only son in double figures. And how about guys like Bradley Beal and Grayson Allen? Did a ton of damage in last Sunday's loss, uh, in last Sunday's Timberwolves loss, but tonight... Beal and Allen with just 12 combined in that first half. They shot 48% from the field, just 3 of 10 from deep. And uh, tons of physicality in this first half. Officials really letting a lot go. These two teams went to the free throw line a combined 27 times, but it took a lot to get that whistle uh, for both sides. So the Wolves have the 10-point lead. This is the Minnesota Lottery Halftime Show. Remember, fans, if your game for a little excitement, just say, I'm in and play the Minnesota Lottery today. We'll step aside and catch you up on what's happening elsewhere on day one of the postseason in the NBA right here on the Timberwolves Radio Network. Dear road rivals, let's talk about extra. Toyota offers tons of extra with Toyota Care. Our no-cost maintenance plan good for two years or 25,000 miles. No-cost oil changes, no-cost tire rotations, no-cost fluid level adjustments, and more. That's a whole lot of extra at no cost from Toyota. Nissan and Ford charge extra for maintenance. 
and that's the kind of extra nobody needs. Try harder. Toyota. Based on manufacturer's data as of 319-2024, covers global factory scheduled service for two years or 25,000 miles, whichever occurs first. See participating dealer for coverage details. At Target, we're home court advantage for the hometown sports fans. And with the Timberwolves season in full gear, we're here to help you gear up and make your game day prep a slam dunk. Hear that? That's what you call a buzzer-beating three-pointer for the win. Time to dish up your famous nachos or put a full-court press on some jalapeno poppers. Then serve up some sweet desserts to celebrate the W. However you do game day, we're here for it at Target and Target.com. Is it possible to detect the undetectable? Could people record their voice and share it with doctors who will use advanced AI technology that can accurately detect signals in the human voice that are indicators of coronary artery disease? Is it possible? It already is, because every day we're doing what's never been done. Learn more at mayoclinic.org slash possible. Mayo Clinic. You know where to go. This copyrighted broadcast of the National Basketball Association may not be retransmitted, reproduced, rebroadcast, or otherwise distributed or used in any form without the express written consent of the NBA. You're listening to the Timberwolves Radio Network. Still at the halftime break here at the Target Center, Timberwolves have a 61-51 lead in this Game 1 matchup with the Phoenix Suns. Wolves closed out the final 10 minutes, 12 seconds of the second quarter with a 30-19 burst. They out-rebounded Phoenix 27-14 in that first half, outscored the Suns 34-22, and they've got a 16-2 edge in the second chance points. Carl Anthony Towns tallied 11 of his team-high 13 points in the second quarter as Anthony Edwards sat for much of the frame, battling foul trouble. Keep an eye on his three personals as the second half gets going. But the Timberwolves, led by as many as 14, they have the double-digit cushion at the break. Let's quickly check in on action elsewhere as the postseason officially gets underway today. One final from earlier this afternoon. Cleveland Cavaliers take a 1-0 series lead in their first-round clash with the Orlando Magic thanks to a 97-83 win earlier today. Later tonight, Denver Nuggets, the defending champs, they'll host Game 1 against LeBron and the Lakers. And just after this one wraps up, should be a fun one between the New York Knicks and the 76ers at Madison Square Garden. That one's set for a 5 o'clock tip-off. We'll take one final pause, get you back inside the arena for second-half action between the Wolves and Suns, Minnesota with that 10-point lead at the half here on the Timberwolves Radio Network. If you've got the right tools and the friendly people at U.S. Bank in your corner, making smarter money choices is a piece of cake. If only our tools and helpful advisors could have helped you avoid some of those not-so-smart choices in life. Like that time you tried to pick up unicycling. Oh, oh, coming through! Or when you thought it'd be okay to pet that squirrel in the park. Good squirrel. Good squirrel. <laughs> While we can't help you with all that, we can help you bank smartly at usbank.com slash smarter together. Member FDIC. The NBA playoffs are here. And we all know playoff mode is a thing. Listen to the evidence. Playoff crowds are going wild. Playoff players are lighting up the court. Even your speakers are in playoff mode. Okay, we'll take it down a notch, but just a notch, because this is the turn it up to 11 NBA playoffs. Playoff mode is clearly a thing. The NBA playoffs presented by Google Pixel continue on ABC, ESPN, TNT, and NBA TV. You're listening to the Timberwolves Radio Network. At the half of game one, Timberwolves lead the Suns 61-51. Alan Horton along with you as we get set for the third quarter of play. We check in with assistant coach Corliss Williamson courtside here. And Corliss, well, I think a lot of fans saw the regular season matchup between the Wolves and Suns and wondered, well, is that just going to continue in the postseason? I think the Wolves answered that with a very solid first half. Were you guys pleased with the way the team performed in those opening 24 minutes? Yes, we definitely were. I mean, uh, you know, one of the things that we talked about was just our approach to this game all week. We've been working hard. The guys have been really focused. So to see us come out and respond like that here in the first half is, is very encouraging. And I think our guys are, are feeling really good right now. You know, I thought the defense was sensational in that first half, yet they still shoot 48%. I think that speaks to probably their shot making. I feel like Durant had six field goals. At least five of them were heavily, heavily contested and just superior shot making in those cases. Yeah, it's one of the things, uh, one of our keys is making sure we can test every shot. You know, Durant, 
He's seven feet tall, so it's, it's, those contests aren't going to bother him too much. But uh, we still want to have that effort there and, and, and try to make it difficult for him. So our guys did a really good job. One of the things that's been really good for us, they've only made three threes and only one corner three in the first half. So uh, we got to keep that type of uh, defensive up. How big was the domination you guys had on the glass? 27-14 to 14 and 8-1 on the offensive end. That was big for us. I mean, 16 second chance points is really big, and that's one of the areas that we have to take advantage of. You know, with their smaller lineup against our big guys, we definitely have to make them pay on the inside. Is there a big key in your eyes for the second half? Uh, try to keep doing the same thing. <laughs> same recipe. Got it. Corliss, appreciate it. Good luck second half. All right, thank you. Corliss Williamson, assistant coach for the Timberwolves, and Chris Finch's staff along with us as we get set for the second half of play. Timberwolves basketball is being brought to you by U.S. Bank. U.S. Bank is proud to be the official bank of the Timberwolves. Timberwolves shot 47% in that first half. And I think that I speak for some Wolves fans out there who really did wonder, and there was part of me that really wondered, you know, was that for real the regular season, that domination the Suns had against the Timberwolves in those three games and dominating opening quarters and turning the Wolves over, offensive and defensive struggles for Minnesota. I think you, you wondered how this was going to play out, but I think what the Wolves showed in that opening half is that this is a team that won 56 games, is the three seed for a reason, has home court advantage for a reason, and with proper preparation and three days of full practice, uh, they got after it, and it had showed dividends over the first 24 minutes. Now, with that being said, still 24 to go. The Wolves have to duplicate that effort in the second half. And they've got to continue to find ways to slow down Kevin Durant, Bradley Beal, and Devin Booker. They combined for 33 points in that first half. Durant with 18 of those on 6 of 12 shooting. Beal had 8. Devin Booker had 7. Booker does have the three personal fouls. Towns got going. 13 points. 11 of those came in the second quarter. Here's Cat left of the lane. A lob inside to Rudy. Tough catch for Rudy. Brings it down on Nurkic. Turns. Drop step up with the right hand. No good off glass. Good contest by Nurkic without fouling. He's got two. Here's Brad Beal off a feed from Allen. Catch and shoot left wing three. Corliss Williamson just mentioned how the Suns only had three threes in that first half. Three of ten. Bradley Beal knocks one down. And just like that, it's a seven-point game. Timberwolves from left to right in their classic edition frost white tops and bottoms. We got the old Shep logo on the shorts. Here's McDaniels against Allen. Got held. No call into the mid post. Out to Ant, right side, he'll pull up on the three. Tough shot, it's off the heel, and Nurkic has the rebound. Here come the Suns on the move in the front court. Durant against Towns in the paint, falls away from eight, hits the jumper. 5-0 burst in the opening 55 seconds of the second half. I feel like the Timberwolves got to have some points here on this possession. Here is Conley, left wing, Towns holds against Grayson Allen. And Cat puts it on the floor. A whistle stops play. They're going to call a defensive three second against Phoenix. Cat will take the technical free throw that comes with a defensive three second call. Suns right now in a 9 0 run going back to the second quarter. They scored the final four points of that frame. Overall, it was a strong second quarter for Minnesota. They outscored the Suns 34 to 23, so plus 11. And they outscored them 30 to 19 over the final 10 minutes and 12 seconds of that second frame. 9-1 Phoenix run. The Timberwolves have it. Here's Ant down the lane, scoops it up off the glass, and on his way down, still had enough on it to push it up off the glass for two. It's been a tough 12 for Anthony Edwards. Here's Yusuf Nurkic. Hand off to Durant. Nurkic sets the screen. Cat ran right through it, knocking the big man down. Nurkic went down fairly easily there. Durant with it up top. Iso against Gobert. Pull up 17 footer. Got it. Two more for Kevin Durant. It's up to 22. 64 58. It's a six point game. Wolves look a little bit stagnant. They play with such great pace in the opening half. Here's Mike, quickly drives in to the rim. The shot no on Grayson Allen. Conley thought he got fouled. Suns have the rebound. Here's Allen on the push against McDaniels. Stops in the low block and turns and hightails it out to the three-point line. Durant, wing right, sets up Booker. On the baseline, knocked away by Conley, out of bounds. Booker got flat and he thought he got fouled. Players are learning very quickly that 
This is going to be a physical game tonight. Uh, we kindly got fouled on that way. We look at the replay. It's, it's kind of the same foul that Grayson Allen picked up in the first half as he went against Gobert. Corner three on the way for Beal, no good. Cat rips down the rebound. There's Mike up into the front court. Drops it off for Towns, quickly moves by Nurkic to the cup, layup is good. And again, Cat having success when he goes quickly. Nurkic was just flat footed. Seven footer was helpless. Here's Booker up in the front court. He's hounded by McDaniels. Off a Nurkic screen one way, then back the other. Booker at the elbow, now to the right wing and out. 12 on the shot clock. Grayson against Conley. In the paint. Oh, got the elbow up. That's an obvious offensive foul. Grayson Allen picks it up. Mike Conley down, holding his face. It'll be Timberwolves basketball. Mike finally helped up. And the Wolves will bring it up. Take a look at this replay. Oh, Mike got bumped a couple of times there. Oh, he took two elbows there. They get a look at it now. It's always curious to me as Mark Davis steps to the microphone. We will review this foul on Allen for the appropriate penalty. So they'll take a look at it to see if this is going to get upgraded to a flagrant foul. 66-58. And as you look at the replay, Allen comes across the lane, and they actually knock heads even before there was a foul called. And oh, then, wow, Allen really gets the left elbow across the face of Conley. I, I think this is clearly a flagrant foul. You have to be under control of your arms and limbs. Interestingly, this is not a TV timeout. And neither of the officials are on the headset here. Now they want to get Aaron Smith involved. Now they do pit the headset on. And I believe this call will be made in consultation with Secaucus, New Jersey. I I'm always intrigued as to what leads the officials to finally go look at a play. Because they waited a good 30 seconds. Mike was down. And then at some point, they decide to go look at it. Was it because Mike's down for so long? What was the trigger? I mean, they should have immediately said, hey, we're going to look at this thing. What changed after 30 seconds to a minute? I mean, Mike's got clear legal guarding position. Allen swings the arm through. He's trying to move the ball from the left side to the right side. And his elbow clearly comes into the face of Conley. Clearly an offensive foul, and I think it comes in with such force that this has to be a flagrant foul. Of course, as soon as you think one thing, it's usually the other. Taking a long time to look at this. We probably could have squeezed in a media timeout. Here comes Mark Davis. Upon review, it has been determined that the ruling on the floor of offensive foul stands as the contact, his, L, his forearm was in a vertical position prior to the contact, and Conley was in his natural space. Offensive foul. Wow. Surprised. They bumped right there. I love that they bumped heads even before it started. I mean, I, I just think that's a flagrant. I think there's such discrepancy between what's an offensive foul, a flagrant, and a flagrant two. What was the game we had with Nas Reed? Got flagrant foul two ejected on something far less than this. And this doesn't even rise to a flagrant one. Timberwolves have possession of the ball. It's 66-58, an eight-point advantage. 9.18 left to go in the third quarter. Glad you're along with us from downtown Minneapolis on this Saturday afternoon. Mike Conley wing right off the Gobert screen, bouncing up top, here's Towns. One dribble, pull up, three on the way, yes! Towns knocks down his first three of the night. He's one of two from long range. Timberwolves have knocked down five threes. The Suns have hit four. Both teams, not high volume three-point shooters, but pretty good three-point shooters, both in the top five in the NBA. Nurkic, top of the key against Gobert. Passes 
Towns right side. Here's Durant against Towns. Pulls him out to the perimeter. Five on the shot clock. Durant tries to answer with a pull-up three of his own, and he strokes it. What you can do, I can do better, says KD, who's got 25. KD and Booker will be teammates of Anthony Edwards with Team USA at the Olympics. Here's Ant with it on the right side. Inside the arc, probe steps to his right, pulls up. Mid-range jumper is good. 14 for Anthony Edwards. Back to a 10-point Timberwolves lead with Bradley Beal bringing it up. Now off to Durant. KD on the right side, crosses over on Towns. Pulls up over Gobert, came out to help. And Gobert is right there. You, you can't have a better contest without a foul. 27 for Durant, that's what he averages per game in the regular season, fifth best. His teammate Devin Booker, one spot behind him, sixth in scoring, averaging 27. Towns with it up top against Beal, lowers the shoulder, drives in, the floater no good. Beal's got the rebound, Nurkic hits the deck. Looked like he got hit up around the head. Here's Durant on a run to the rim. Kick out Booker in the corner, fires on the three, missed it. The rebound, Beal soaring in, tried to put it back up and in, missed the shot, but there was contact. Well, this can't be in the act of shooting. Oh, they're saying he had two hands on, he had possession. Wow, you don't see that call very often. Ben Taylor makes that call, sending Bradley Beal to the free throw line. They say Beal had it, then got fouled. He did have it with two hands, there's no doubt about that. The question is, when did the contact occur? Normally, 90% of the time, they say the contact occurs before, you know, you gain possession of the ball. But not so on this possession. So Bradley Beal knocks down the first. Beal had 36 here on Sunday. He's got 12, make it 13 tonight. On five of eight shooting. You know, the Suns starting lineup, which has the, uh, Fifth best net rating in the NBA amongst lineups that have played at least 250 or more minutes. Only played five minutes together before Christmas. They didn't get to their starting lineup until December the 20. They won the 27th, but Beal wasn't back. It was the next game, either the 28th or 29th. Town shot clock winding down, fires it inside to Gobert, and the shot clock expires. Poor recognition there by the Wolves at the offensive end. 71-65. Timberwolves by six, seven to go here in the third. Timberwolves with nine fast break points, the Suns with five. Here's Beal, stops at the elbow. Carl goes sliding by in a timeout for Chris Finch. The Suns have made this a four point game, 71-67. Timeout of the floor. 6-0 Phoenix run to climb to within four. 7-0-3 left to go in the third quarter. We step aside from target center. Game one, Timberwolves 71, Suns 67 on the Timberwolves radio network. Bring the fun to family time with a visit to Treasure Island Resort and Casino. Start by making a splash and memories at the lagoon. Our indoor water park includes a lazy river, an activity pool, and more exciting features. Then hit the lanes at Island Extreme Bowl for some family-friendly competition before you head to our luxurious hotel for a relaxing night away. Book your stay now at TICasino.com. Treasure Island Resort and Casino, destination fun. Timber Tech and TimberTech.com, not only are the best in the business, but the decks they develop and the decks they build are the highest of quality. In fact, you will endure a lifetime of happiness with that deck with Timber Tech. So ask for Timber Tech when putting together your next project, and that also can include porches. TimberTech.com is where you find the free samples. Once again, start at TimberTech.com. You are our local businesses. You are our community partners, our neighbors, families, and friends. You represent the American dream and uphold the spirit in which it was created. Since 1904, Federated Mutual Insurance Company has been honored to serve and help protect your business. When you need us, we're here to help, face to face. At Federated Insurance, it's our business to protect yours. Rated A plus superior by AM Best Company. Hello, I'm Matt Meyer, fifth generation farmer from Clearwater, Minnesota, and owner of Thousand Hills Lifetime Grazed Grass Fed Beef. 
We believe the tastiest, most nutritious beef comes from cattle that are regeneratively grazed for their lifetime. Never confined to a feedlot, never fed GMO plants or grains, and not exposed to chemical pesticides like glyphosate. Please find our grass-fed beef at Coburn's and your local food co-op. Thousand Hills Lifetime Grazed, nourishing soil, plants, cattle, and people by holistically grazing cattle for their lifetime. Down to four at 71 67. We are midway through the second quarter of play. Soon to be teammates for Team USA at the Olympics coming up this summer Kevin Durant and Anthony Edwards. Here's what Ant had to say about what he learned about KD's game after guarding Durant a whole bunch this season. What makes it different from watching him when I was young and guarding him, that he's he's actually really that good. <laughs> like, you know how you be like, man, he ain't that good. When I get there, like, I'll shut him down, and then you get there, and you're like, ah, he is that good. So I think, yeah, that's the main thing. And how about the other way around? Here's what Durant had to say about Anthony Edwards. I mean, you can't force him to do nothing. Like, you know what I'm saying? You just got to win the numbers game. Just have more more players on him. You know, two or three guys in this area. Uh, we're not selling out to stop them, but, you know, you got you show presentation like, like there is more help than it is. And hopefully that deters him a bit. But he's just, he's, he's tough. He, move, he moves so smooth and effortlessly that a lot of times he can beat double and triple teams. So. Uh, but I think he did a solid job of just forcing tough shots, uh, not putting him on a free throw line, and getting on the running as well. So mutual admiration for two heavy scores. Here's Ant the paint, got stripped by Beal. Bradley comes away with it, now Durant collects. So the Timberwolves turn it over, it's their ninth of the game. Suns have had the advantage here in the third, outscoring the Wolves 16 to 10. Beal against Towns into the paint, switched on to Gobert. Now Nurkic will funnel it out to Durant, who fakes left, comes right, splits through defenders, lost the ball, loose baseline, out of bounds, it'll stay. Suns basketball, five to shoot. Wolves just scrambling defensively. That's what you have to do. It's a numbers, and KD said it well, with any of the scores out here, Booker, Beal, Durant, Towns, Edwards, it's a numbers game. They're gonna hit their shots. You're not gonna get stops every time. Inbound, Allen catch and shoot right angle three, in and out, no, and the rebound to Mike Conley. So a rare miss from deep in the second half. The Suns are two of five from long range after halftime. They went just three of 10 from distance in the first half of play. And at the hash mark, far side, Allen's on. Rudy slips the screen, rolls inside, that pulls Nurkic away. And against Grayson Allen, beats him, pulls up, 14-footer off glass, rattles it in. Two more for Anthony Edwards, he's got 16. The Wolves lead by six. Six to go here in the third. Grayson Allen, in the three games against the Wolves in the regular season, average 19 a game. Here's Durant, quick crossover, gets free of Towns, running to Gobert, the pull-up jumper is well contested, but that's what I mean. You get a little too well contested, it turns into a foul. And Rudy picks it up, that's gonna be his fourth. Durant going to the free throw line for his eighth and ninth free throw attempts of the game. Seventy-three, sixty-seven. Durant knocks down the first. Nikhil Alexander Walker in. And I misspoke. It's not the fourth on Gobert. He has three. Mike Conley takes his seat. Nikhil had an excellent first half. 14 minutes play, 12 points, three rebounds, one assist. One out of two for Durant. He's missed a couple of free throws tonight. Seven of nine. Here's Ann up the center of the floor. Off the Rudy screen to his right. Runs into Nurkic, two on him now. Now a bounce pass to McDaniels. They swing it to the weak side. Nikhil will dump it inside to Gobert. Rudy comes across the lane, bangs on Nurkic. Turn around, tough shot, off glass, got it, and a foul! A three-point opportunity for Rudy Gobert. Falling away from 10 feet, he banks it in. Five and a half to go in the third. Rudy has put the hometown Wolves up by seven. Free throw coming up. Wow. That is certainly not the strength of Rudy Gobert's game. He makes the Suns pay here, and it picks up the third on Nurkic. Some Rudy chants throughout the crowd here at Target Center. 
Timberwolves are plus 13 on the glass. 31 to 18. Free throw, good. 15 out of 16 at the line tonight for the Timberwolves. They're making the most of their free throw attempts. Up by eight with five and a half to go third quarter. Beal with it inside of midcourt, guarded by McDaniels. Grant swinging his right arm around in a windmill fashion. I think trying to get the pace increased. Off a of Nurkic screen, here's Beal across the lane. Bounces to the corner of Booker, back to Beal in the corner. He's doubled there. They feed Booker down low. Cross court deflected out of bounds. It'll stay Phoenix ball, but there's 1.6 on the shot clock. 1.6. Frank Vogel is going to use a timeout here. That will not change the situation about the 1.6. It'll be sideline out of bounds, not a baseline out of bounds because the ball hit the underside of the uh, backboard. So a timeout on the floor with 5.11 left to go in the third. The Wolves leading the Suns by 8.76-68 here in game one of this best of seven. First round series, you're listening to Minnesota Timberwolves basketball. Catch Minnesota Timberwolves basketball. Edwards ahead of the pack and he throws it down. On Valley Sports. Oh, the block by Gobert. The clutch shots. He puts it up. Oh! The superstar highlights. Edwards, oh my! The can't miss moments. Conley, three ball, corner pocket. Another timely three by Mike Conley. Oh! Watch the Timberwolves on Valley Sports or stream on the Valley Sports app. Dear Road Rivals, let's talk about extra. Toyota offers tons of extra with Toyota Care. Our no-cost maintenance plan good for two years or 25,000 miles. No-cost oil changes, no-cost tire rotations, no-cost fluid level adjustments, and more. That's a whole lot of extra at no cost from Toyota. Nissan and Ford charge extra for maintenance. And that's the kind of extra nobody needs. Try harder. Toyota. Based on manufacturer's data as of 319-2024, covers normal factory scheduled service for two years or 25,000 miles, whichever occurs first. See participating dealer for coverage details. Toyota brings us this scoreboard update. Visit Toyota.com or your local Toyota dealers today. First round of the NBA playoffs officially underway. One final from earlier this afternoon, the Cleveland Cavaliers behind uh, a big day from Donovan Mitchell, 30 points, also two boards, three assists, and three steals. Cavs get a 97-83 win at home over the Orlando Magic, so they have a 1-0 lead in that 4-5 series in the East. couple games later tonight at the Garden, New York Knicks will play host to Joel Embiid and the 76ers. That one tips off shortly after 5 o'clock Central Time, and... The nightcap, of course, LeBron James and the Lakers. They captured that seven seed in the play-in tournament. Their prize? A first-round matchup with the defending champs. Here's LeBron. I'm the defending champion. Uh, they know what it takes. They know how to win. They've been um, extremely dominant in their home floor over the last few years. You know, they got an uh, MVP on their team. They got a closer on their team. They got high-level players, high IQ players. They got a hell of a coach. So, you know, we have to play mistake-free basketball, make it tough on them. Um, they're going to try to make it tough on us, obviously. If we can play our, as, as, as great as game we can play, they're going to play as great as game we, they play. It's going to come down to one or two possessions, you know, and uh, we'll see who executes them. That one will get started at 7.30 tonight. Of course, entering the matchup, the Nuggets have won eight straight against the Lakers, including that competitive sweep in last year's Western Conference Finals. Back to Allen. All right, Cal, thank you. 5-11 left to go in the third. 76-68, Wolves lead the Suns by eight. They've been up by as many as 14. And they have trailed by as many as five, but that was back in the first quarter. Timberwolves led in the three games in the regular season for a grand total of two minutes in 144 minutes of game action against the Suns, they led for two of those. They led by 13 minutes in the first half. And there's 24 minutes in a half. 13 of 24 versus two of 144. Gobert and Durant getting chippy right off the inbound. Jockeying for position, slapping each other's hands. Grayson Allen will trigger in. There's 1.6 to shoot for Phoenix. Allen looking for Durant. Nothing. Struggling to get it in. Leads Booker toward the rim. The layup with the left hand is no good. It's off the back iron. They got a great look. A great look. Timberwolves have it. Here's him on the move. Right to the top of the key. The elbow spins. Lumping under. Runs it up with the right hand. It hits again. Boy, that has been one big development in Anthony Edwards' game this season. 
is him using up the dribble, but then continuing with the footwork and using the steps he's got available. Grayson Allen, left side, runs into town. Spins, lost the ball. Oh, a late foul. Mark Davis makes the call. Grayson Allen is down. Love to see another replay of that. 78-68, the Wolves by 10. Oh, and Allen stepped on the foot of Cat. The big size 20 has gotten away. Allen is kind of hobbling as he comes back toward the Suns bench. Speaking of injuries, Kyle Anderson will not return in this game. He's got a right hip pointer. He is on the Wolves bench, but he is not going to play. And Grayson Allen's going to go right back to the Suns locker room. He is jogging. So he's putting some weight on that. Here's Royce O'Neal. Couldn't knock it down another one. He was two for two in the first half. This one wide open. He was a couple of feet beyond the arc right angle and missed it. Wolves with possession up 10. Ant baseline pull up on Beal. The shot short. The rebound Durant. KD lots it up to midcourt. Here's Bradley Beal against Cat. Down the lane, the layup no good with the left hand. Beal got flat and he thought he got fouled. Frank Vogel can't believe it. Here's Ant up in the front court. Still a 10 point advantage. Edwards, two man game with Towns. Cat over his head, dumps it off to Ant down the lane, swings it to the corner and turns it over. Durant with a steal. Now Booker on the attack against Cat. Hangs, drops it back. Durant out to Beal, up top to O'Neal. Good job defensively for the Wolves get back. Nurkic holds, they dump it inside, looking for Durant. Nikhil went around him, knocked it free. Towns controls. Now Ant with it with 3.45 to go in the third quarter. And contact as McKeel is coming up. I should say McDaniel's coming up from the baseline. And O'Neal just lowered the shoulder. And now O'Neal and Edwards separated by official Ben Taylor. O'Neal called for the foul. It's the second team foul on the Suns here in the third. 78-68 is the score. Timberwolves by 10. 18 points now for Ants taking a 14 shots to get there. Nikhil, ball in hand up top. Royce O'Neal on him. Here comes Ant clearing the right side. Guarded by Beal. They'll give it to Towns. And an offensive foul against Carl Anthony Towns. He was just trying to set up. I mean, 18 feet out. And that's the fourth foul on Cat. Timberwolves will make a substitution here. Let's see what Cat does. Boy, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Looks like two guys just battling hard for position. Cat, third foul here in the quarter. This shot by Booker, who is now three of 12 from the field. Here's Nikhil on the left wing. Inside the arc, drops it back out. Here's Ant with a right-handed dribble on the attack. Down the lane over Eubanks. Off glass, no. Rudy offensive rebound, put back, no. But he got Bradley Beal in a bad way. Beal commits the foul. Rudy to the free throw line for two. 78-68, Timberwolves by 10. And Rudy to the free throw line it was one for one at the stripe tonight. Attention parents, don't wait till the end of the school year. Now's the best time to register your child for the Wolves and Lynx summer basketball camps. Camps are being held throughout the Metro. They'll feature a special appearance by Crunch. Registration now open at TimberwolvesBasketballAcademy.com. That's TimberwolvesBasketballAcademy.com. Rudy, two for two at the line. He's got one more coming. Eric Gordon in. Bradley Beal out. 3-11 left to go in the third. At the half, Cat had himself just one personal foul. He's picked up three in the third quarter. Free throw no by Rudy. Eubanks has the rebound. So they have gone with Eubanks. And elected not to uh, play Durant at the five in the non Nurkic minutes. Here's Durant dumping it inside. Eubanks turns his shot no good. The rebound tapped around. McDaniels controls. Wolves bring it up from left to right. Under three to go in the third. Nikhil directing traffic with Jade, Ant, Nas, and Rudy. Nikhil still maintaining the dribble against Eric Gordon. Now Rudy Gobert straddling the three point line. Out to Ant. Ant left handed dribble to the elbow, spins, tough fall away from 16, in and out, and back in. 20 for Anthony Edwards, timeout Frank Vogel. Target center is alive, 81-68, it's a 13 point lead. 
8-0 Timberwolves run. Ant's got 10 of his 20 here in the third quarter. Target center is beside themselves. We step aside for 30. We're back at 30 on the Timberwolves radio network. If you've got the right tools and the friendly people at U.S. Bank in your corner, making smarter money choices is a piece of cake. If only our tools and helpful advisors could have helped you avoid some of those not-so-smart choices in life. Like that time you tried to pick up unicycling. Whoa, whoa, whoa coming through! Yeah. Or when you thought it'd be okay to pet that squirrel in the park. Good squirrel. Good squirrel. <laughs> While we can't help you with all that, we can help you bank smartly at usbank.com slash smarter together. Member FDIC. You're listening to the Timberwolves Radio Network. Timberwolves 8-0 run is putting the hometown Wolves, the number three seed up, 81-68. Appreciate everyone listening in across the Timberwolves Radio Network, the iHeartRadio app, Timberwolves mobile app, Sirius XM, satellite radio, channel 86 this afternoon. Special shout out to Justin who is listening in from the wheat fields in North Dakota. Sent me a picture as well. He's out on the machinery. He's doing his thing. Also, shout out to Ricky, Timberwolves fan, listening in on a train right now through the iHeartRadio app. He's listening in on a train from Belgium to Amsterdam. Appreciate you, Ricky. Timberwolves up by 13 with 2.32 to go in the third. Suns will in battle on the baseline. He'll bring it up here from right to left. Ant with 10 of his 20 in the third. Durant hounded by McDaniels coming across midcourt. Eubanks with it up top, guarded by Gobert. Here comes Booker. Now he's switched on to Gobert to the right side and O'Neal right back to Booker. Eight to shoot. Booker takes a run with the left hand. Into the paint, out to Gordon. Pump takes moves to his left, fires on the three. It's no good. Rudy's got the rebound, his 14th of the game. Timberwolves 38 to 20, the advantage in rebounding, plus 18. Nikhil up into the front court, up by 13 with possession here. Ant feeling it against Durant, up fakes the three, drive, stops, now steps back on the jumper, and it's again! 22 for Anthony Edwards. Ant is six for nine here in the third quarter from the field. Here's Gordon, right side three on the way, missed it long, offensive rebound, Royce O'Neal. Just the third offensive rebound of the game for the Suns, who are a good offensive rebounding team, eighth best in the league. Along the baseline, Booker bumped by Nikhil, the fall away shot out of bounds, no. Glanced off the front rim, free throws coming up for Booker. Ah, Nikhil did a lot of good things on that defensive possession against Booker, but got in a bad way right at the end. Booker sensed it, drew the contact, and now going to the free throw line for two shots. Well, one thing Mike Conley talked about this week at practice was the need for the Wolves to improve not only at the defensive end. They've got the number one defense. They got shredded by Phoenix in the in the regular season. But their offense has to help their defense. I think that's a big a big deal for us. You know, if we can get more you know shots up and, and stuff on the rim, I think it, it, it opens up the game for us a lot. Our defense isn't you know, so much pressure isn't put on our defense. Uh, we rely on it a lot, but we don't want to have to rely on it on every possession and feel like that, you know, if we don't get a stop here, the game's getting out of reach kind of thing. So, um, you know, our offense is going to dictate a lot. And the offense has been better tonight. They're now shooting 50%. Ant's had the hot hand. He's got it inside of midcourt. Nikhil to the corner. Nas is open. The three ball on its way. In and out. No. Great look by Nas. He could not get down. All seven of his points came in the opening half. There's Booker on the attack against McDaniels. Inside the arc to the mid post. Stop and pop jumper. Rattles around and wouldn't drop. The Wolves have the rebound. The Suns have missed their last nine shots. Nine in a row they've missed. Ant against Durant. Stops up top. Off the Gobert screen. Now on the left side. Hounded by Eubanks. Pops on a three and strokes it. He's got another one. Anthony Edwards staring down Kevin Durant, slamming his chest with his fist. It's a 13-2 Wolves run and an offensive foul. Eubank set a screen heading to midcourt that picked off Jaden McDaniels. And Ben Taylor calls the foul against Drew Eubanks. Wolves up by 16 with 45 seconds to go in the third. There's still a long way to go in this one. Ant's got 25 points in the game. He had 10 at the half. Ant 
Durant gets Durant, uses the Gobert screen, bounce back McDaniels, takes a run into the paint to the corner. Nas open again, can he knock it down? No. And battling for the rebound, loose ball against Eubanks. That's his second foul in the last 30 seconds. It'll be sideline out of bounds here. 26.1 left to go in the third. The Wolves are up 86-70. Inbound Edwards with it up top. And against Durant, stops, pull up on the three. Got it again! It's his quarter! It's 31 for Edwards! 21 here in the third. Booker bumps left wing. And the foul is called on Nas Reed. Booker just hunting for a foul. He's going to end up at the free throw line for two shots, I believe. He was beyond the arc, but I think they're saying he was not in the act of shooting. Timberwolves up by 19 here in game one. Booker's free throw is good. He's got one more coming. Bradley Beal in, Drew Eubanks out. The plus minus numbers are not going to be pretty for Drew Eubanks. Two free throws good for Devin Booker, 89-72. 15.1 left to go in the third. And is at 28 points, not 31. He's well on his way, but he's not there yet. Nikhil up top, here's Ant. Back to Nikhil in the corner, fires on the three and strokes it. With 2.2 seconds left to go in the third, inbound Royce O'Neal. He'll take a run at a half court shot. It's way over the backboard and out of play. What a run to finish the third. Over the final 6 12, the Timberwolves outscore the Suns 21 to 5. It was a four point game. The Wolves now lead by 20, going to the fourth on the Timberwolves radio network. Remembering all the ways Minnesota Lottery Dollars help our state is easy. Just think of this acronym, Beaches Treat Cows. It stands for Bees, Education, Agriculture, Canoeing, Habitats, Endangered Species, Transit, Renewable Energy, Air Quality, Trails, Conservation, Outreach, Water, and Sustainability. See, it's easy. Since 1990, the Minnesota Lottery has raised nearly $4 billion to help our very own Beaches Treat Cows. So say I'm in and play your part in helping Minnesota. Is it possible to see the unseeable? Could advanced imaging technology allow doctors to look deeper into the human body, uncovering the smallest of details that would otherwise go unnoticed, leading to more accurate diagnoses and treatments? Is it possible? It already is. Because every day we're doing what's never been done. Learn more at mayoclinic.org slash possible. Mayo Clinic. You know where to go. The NBA app is everyone's app. Every fan of every team. Oh, my goodness. Everyone who follows LeBron, Tatum, and Embiid in the app. Every warrior who's ready to go to battle over three-point percentages. Every streetwear king who's here for the tunnel fits. Every young buck, nugget, and grizzly who wants to take a peek behind the scenes of the league. And everyone else on this floating basketball we call Earth. Download the NBA app today. Available in the Google Play, Apple app, and Android stores. If you've got the right tools and the friendly people at U.S. Bank in your corner, making smarter money choices is a piece of cake. If only our tools and helpful advisors could have helped you avoid some of those not-so-smart choices in life. Like that time you tried to pick up unicycling. Whoa, whoa, whoa coming through! Or when you thought it'd be okay to pet that squirrel in the park. Good squirrel. Good squirrel. Shush. While we can't help you with all that, we can help you bank smartly at usbank.com slash smarter together. Member FDIC. You're listening to the Timberwolves Radio Network. Twelve minutes up on the scoreboard. Fourth and final quarter about to get underway in game one of this best of seven first round series. The Timberwolves, the three seed, the Suns, the six. Timberwolves, a 21 to five run over the final six plus minutes to push a four point lead to 20. Anthony Edwards, spectacular in that third quarter. 
He had 18 points on eight of 11 shooting and two of three from beyond the arc. He also added two rebounds and had one assist. The Phoenix offense stifled by the Timberwolves number one ranked defense. Suns went 0 for 10 with two turnovers in their final 14 possessions. Ah, there was an offensive rebound in there too. Probably 13 possessions. Tremendous defense. Suns have missed 10 straight shots. Two turnovers, three of four from the free throw line. Ant's gonna remain on the floor. He played the entire 12 minutes of the third quarter and he's not coming off. This is normally the time where he'll take a three or four minute break to start the fourth. Ant's been a top 10 scorer in the NBA in the third quarters along with the first. His third quarter tonight, 18. Royce O'Neal baseline floater up and in. Good aggressive drive by Royce O'Neal. 92-74. So the Wolves have not been able to find out what this Phoenix team is made of in fourth quarters. Their fourth quarter numbers are tremendously awful for a team that is 49 and 33. 30th in offense, 22 in defense, 30th in net rating. But it hasn't mattered against the Wolves because they've had such big leads, 20-plus in all three games. Conley up top, fires on a three, it's offline. Good feed from Nas Reed. And a loose ball foul battling for the rebound. It'll go against Rudy Gobert, and that'll be his fourth. Wolves do have some foul trouble issues. Rudy with four, Cat with four. They've got Mike Conley with three, Ant with three. A couple of players with two. Suns will bring it up. It is an 18-point lead, 92-74. A little clock issue. So the Suns will have to come back in the backcourt and inbound again. 21-5 was the run over the final 6-12 of the third quarter. Booker with it up top. Dribbles to the elbows. Got Nikhil on his hip. Now moves to his right. Fires on the 14-footer and hits it. So a 4-0 burst, one minute gone here in the fourth. Mike Conley across the timeline. Out to the three-point line, wing left to Gobert. Now Conley bumped by Nurkic, feeds it off to Rudy. Left wing, 10 to shoot, back to Mike. Bounce pass, Rudy inside, got stripped. Eric Gordon comes away with it. Rudy thought he got fouled. Suns control, they're on a mini 4-0 burst here. Gordon with it, oh, crashes into Conley. It's gotta be offensive, and they call a block. Wow, looked like Mike was there, and Gordon just lowered the shoulder. He laid down the hammer. Big time collision. Mike, I mean, Gordon lowered the shoulder and extended it too. For as violent as collision as it was, Mike pops right back up. It might have been the right call. It looked like Mike just moved to his right a little bit, cutting off Gordon. Sideline out of bounds. It's a second foul already. In the quarter, Nurkic inside missed the layup and a reach in foul on Mike Conley. Two free throws coming up. It's been a poor start to the fourth quarter. Chris Finch might need a timeout to kind of regroup things. You could argue they're coming off a timeout in between quarters. Conley commits his fifth personal foul. It's five on Mike because he just picked up two in the last 10 seconds here. Monte Morris will check in for Mike Conley. Free throw is good for Nurkic. He rattles that one in. Mentioned Ant in third quarters this year. He was the ninth leading scorer in third quarters, averaging eight points a game. He's gone for 10 or more 28 times in third quarters in the regular season. He went for 18 tonight. Off the back iron, no. Nurkic, one out of two. Timberwolves, an efficient 16 of 18 at the line. The Suns, 18 of 23. 5 0 Suns run to begin the fourth quarter. Wolves with it, Ant up top, pounding the dribble against Royce O'Neal. Now they run two at him. Dribbling to his right, now off to Nas Reed. Nas with a left-handed dribble, turns the corner on Beal. Off to Gobert, up strong, missed the shot, but there was contact. This should be on Nurkic, it'll be his fourth. And Rudy will go to the free throw line for two shots. Really heads up play 
by Nas on that drive. Again, calm, cool, collected. Made the right play. Recognized the situation. Nas playing in only his sixth career postseason game. Off the back iron, up off the top of the backboard, but not over it. And back through for Rudy Gobert. Not the way he drew it up, but he'll take 93-77. Seven points, 15 rebounds for Rudy Gobert. Substitution, Jaden McDaniels is coming back in. When it comes to playoff experience, the Suns team is loaded. A combined 60 years of playoff experience and 531 games. Timberwolves, 42 years, 294 games combined. Up all the players on both 15-man rosters. Of course, the Suns being paced by Kevin Durant 13 times in the postseason, 166 games. Mike Conley leads the way for the Timberwolves. 11 times, 78 games. Suns turned it over after Rudy hit two. Nas to the rim, reverse layup. Oh, he got it! A circus shot by Nas Reed. The crowd's going crazy. Nas scoops up the loose ball and makes the Suns pay himself. 96-77. Up to a 19-point advantage with 9.47 left. We step aside here in game one on the Timberwolves Radio Network. Life's a game. You better be ready for it. Dynamic Drips can give your body what it needs to perform at its very best through mobile IV infusion therapy. A professionally trained nurse comes directly to you, your office, your home, your couch even. Their team administers an IV drip, loading your body with essential hydration and vitamins you think you've been getting but desperately need. Vitamin C, vitamin B, calcium, magnesium. Are you getting all those? Dynamic Drips IV can get you all that and so much more directly into your body. See how good your body can feel. Dynamic Drips. Com. Your lucky jersey, your pack, your hometown team. It's super fan season in Minneapolis downtown, so don't miss out on a minute of fun, friends, and nonstop excitement. From pregame meetups to postgame celebrations, be there for your favorite teams and the big wins. In Minneapolis, we play for the love of the game, and you're the best part of our story. Visit MPLSdowntown.com to get your game on. See you downtown. At Target, we're home court advantage for the hometown sports fans. And with the Timberwolves season in full gear, we're here to help you gear up and make your game day prep a slam dunk. Hear that? That's what you call a buzzer-beating three-pointer for the win. Time to dish up your famous nachos or put a full court press on some jalapeno poppers. Then serve up some sweet desserts to celebrate the W. However you do game day, we're here for it at Target and Target.com. TimberTech and TimberTech.com, not only are the best in the business, but the decks they develop and the decks they build are the highest of quality. In fact, you will endure a lifetime of happiness with that deck with TimberTech. So ask for TimberTech when putting together your next project, and that also can include porches. TimberTech.com is where you find the free samples. Once again, start at TimberTech.com. Going coast to coast, but three quarters of the length of the floor, and his reverse finish, getting this crowd aroused with 9:47 left, 96-77, up by 19. Nas, who missed a postseason experience last year when he broke his wrist late in the season in the game at Phoenix, he was asked this week about being healthy and looking forward to this opportunity. I'm excited. I mean, I think i'm excited to play basketball around this time you know i think uh i mean i'm sure everybody in the league would be but you know i think all eyes on you uh, i guess pressure um i think I, I think you kind of become one of those guys in these moments so i'm excited to you know to make that transition nas has played extremely well tonight he also talked about what his role would be in this postseason i mean i think just being an x factor in any way shape or form like i always say like just doing you know all the little things uh whether it's rebounding uh defense uh, scoring the ball uh communicating i mean I kind of just, you know, I kind of find find it and just trying to execute in that, that, uh, that area. 
Well, Nas has played very under control tonight for the most part, made really good decisions. He's got nine points, two rebounds, and one assist. Nas is a part of a Wolves bench brigade that is outscoring the Suns 26 to eight. We have not seen Grayson Allen since he left at the end of the third quarter with an apparent sprained ankle. Durant open in the corner, buries a three. The Wolves went to a zone, matchup zone that they were working on this week. And boy, the Suns quickly found the hole in that, 96-80. 16-point Timberwolves lead. Ant with it, right side. Here's Nikhil Alexander-Walker, back to Ant. Switched on to Eric Gordon. Ant with a right-handed dribble. He sees nothing but purple jerseys. Three defenders on him, Nas in the corner. Oh, yeah! Buries another one! His second three of the night, he's up to 12 points. Here's Booker, right of the lane, dribbles in him. McDaniel circles back along the baseline, bounces to the corner at Durant. 14 to shoot, Durant poked free. And went out of bounds. Whose ball that gonna be? It's gonna be Timberwolves basketball. Mark Davis said Durant was the last to touch. It'll be another turnover on the Suns. Wolves have turned it over 12 times. The Suns have turned it over 11 times. Ant with it up top off the Rudy screen, now off the Nikhil screen. Nikhil flares out right side, they bounce it to him. Nikhil will line up the three ball, there it goes! Right between the eyes! Nikhil Alexander-Walker puts the Wolves up by 22, 102 to 80. Eric Gordon to the corner, here's Booker. Up top, they move it to the opposite corner. Durant, he crossed over, lost it off the foot of Gobert, out of bounds. It'll stay, Suns basketball. 10-3, Timberwolves run. After the Suns had started the quarter with a 5-0 burst. Devin Booker off the inbound, off the Royce O'Neal screen. Pulls up on a three over Gobert, missed it long, and Ant's got the rebound. 8-20 left to go here in the fourth quarter. The Wolves are up by 22. Anthony Edwards front court. Spaces Beal and Gordon. Now to the right side of Nas Reed. Rudy trying to seal off Durant inside. They couldn't get it to him. And deep three on the way. Strokes it. Nothing but net from five feet beyond the arc. Edwards with 31. Timberwolves by 25. 13 to three. Timberwolves run over the last two minutes. O'Neal up top. Straight away three. That's no good. The Suns just six of 22 from deep. 27%. Throw the regular season right out the window. Timberwolves by 25 in game one. Rudy's got a lane, drives, kick out, Nas, angle three on the way, it swirled out. And soars in offensive rebound. Here's Jaden in the corner, three ball long. Rudy had the rebound, lost it out of bounds. Suns ball, 7.30 left to play. Here's Beal up in the front court. Gordon, quick move on Nas, who poked the ball free. It's out of bounds, it's Timberwolves basketball. What a play by Nas Reed. He was ready for Gordon's quick move, poked it free, and it was out of bounds off EG. 7.26 left. Timberwolves players and fans, certainly in this building, and everyone watching and listening, they remember the Memphis series two years ago. Nothing is taken for granted. The Wolves had trouble closing out those games. Here's McDaniels, tried to feed it inside. He got kicked by Durant. Then a foul as Ant hits Booker coming up the floor. That'll be number four on Anthony Edwards. I'm not sure how that wasn't a kick ball on Durant. But the Suns will inbound in the backcourt. Timberwolves have committed 14 fouls here in the frame. O'Neal, now to Beal up top. Bradley Beal's got 15 points. Gets to the elbow on Gobert, crosses him over, slips, kicks out to O'Neal, frees himself for Nas Reed, fires on the three and strokes it. Third three of the game for Royce O'Neal. 22 point lead, 105-83 with 6.52 left. You're listening to Minnesota Timberwolves basketball. Bring the fun to family time with a visit to Treasure Island Resort and Casino. Start by making a splash and memories at the lagoon. Our indoor water park includes a lazy river, an activity pool, and more exciting features. Then hit the lanes at Island Extreme Bowl for some family-friendly competition before you head to our luxurious hotel for a relaxing night away. Book your stay now at TICasino.com. 
Treasure Island Resort and Casino. Destination fun. Dear road rivals, let's talk about extra. Toyota offers tons of extra with Toyota Care. Our no-cost maintenance plan good for two years or 25,000 miles. No-cost oil changes, no-cost tire rotations, no-cost fluid level adjustments, and more. That's a whole lot of extra at no cost from Toyota. Nissan and Ford charge extra for maintenance. And that's the kind of extra nobody needs. Try harder. Toyota. Based on manufacturer's data as of 319-2024, covers normal factory scheduled service for two years or 25,000 miles, whichever occurs first. See participating dealer for coverage details. Six minutes and change left in this game one. Timberwolves with the 22-point advantage. One final from a game one earlier this afternoon. The Cleveland Cavaliers at home against the Orlando Magic. It's the 4-5 matchup in the East. Cavs handle business with a 97-83 victory. Donovan Mitchell led the way with 30. Cavs have a 1-0 series lead in that one. Lakers will visit the Nuggets tonight. That's the 2-7 clash in the West. That one tips at 7-30. And right after this one wraps up, we'll get underway at Madison Square Garden. New York Knicks hosting the Sixers. That's the 2-7 matchup in the East. It, of course, features Joel Embiid and Tyrese Maxey. Maxi on this clash with Jalen Brunson and a physical Knicks team. At the head of Snake at Jalen Brunson. Uh, we got to find ways to slow him down, but uh, thankfully we got a we got a few people that we can kind of throw at him. You know, we got Joel down there protecting us. They're they're an extremely grimy team. Like they they play hard, they're physical, they're tough, and uh, that's their identity. So uh, for us to go in there and try to get W's and try to win this series, we have to match that, and uh, not just match it, but we have to you know overcome that and be better than that and, and be extremely physical as well. So. I think uh, we know what we have to do, and, uh, you know, they kicked our tail in the regular season, so it's time to go in there and fight. Sixers certainly not your traditional seventh seed. They are undefeated since getting Joel Embiid back in the fold. The scoreboard update brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Let's go places, specifically back to Alan Horton. All right, Cal, thank you very much. 6.52 left to go in this one. Timberwolves are up 105.83, a 22-point advantage. The Wolves bench has been one storyline. They've got 32 points. The Phoenix bench only 11 points. And how about some plus minus numbers? Nikhil Alexander Walker has 18 points, three boards, two assists. He's got four steals. He's hit seven of 10 shots. And he's a plus 28. He has the best plus minus of any player on the floor tonight. Right behind him is Nas Reed, who has 12 points, two boards, two assists, and one steal. He's four of 10 shooting. And Nas is a plus 22 in his 19 minutes. Tremendous bench performances from Nikhil and Nas. Kyle Anderson only played five minutes in the first half. And Monte Morris has played just six minutes total in this game. So really it's been a seven man rotation. Towns has been on the bench for quite some time with the four personal fouls. And the Wolves have not gone back to him yet. They're up by 22. Nikhil, Jade, Mike, Ant, and Rudy, the five on the floor. Rudy and Ant has been on the floor the entire second half. Edwards crosses over on O'Neal, top of the key, sees the second defender, kicks out Conley, right side three, no. Durant has the rebound. He'll feed it off to Booker, who averages 27 a game. He's on 13 right now. He pulls up and drains a right angle three. Right on cue, up to 16 points for Devin Booker. Conley will roll it out. Ant's got to pick it up because Bradley Beal is right there. No walking the dog here in the fourth quarter. 105-86. Right side, Conley. Trying to work some clock. Quick crossover gets him a step on Booker. The corner, Nikhil is open. Sets himself. Fires on the three and missed it. Rudy got a hand to the rebound. Jaden tracks it down near side along the Suns bench. Here's Edwards with it. Ant one on one against Bradley Beal. Side steps to his right. Fires on the three. It's going to be offline. Durant's got another rebound. Second straight, he's got seven for the game. Eric Gordon stop and pop right side three. In and out, no, and the rebound. Loose on the floor, scooped up by Anthony Edwards. That's his eight. Ant with 31 points, eight rebounds and six times. Feeds Rudy down the lane, high off the window, no, but he drew the whistle. And Gobert will go to the free throw line with 5.44 left to play. Just past the five o'clock hour here in the Central Time Zone. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. All across the Minnesota Timberwolves radio network. Along with studio host and executive producer Cal Soderquist, I'm Alan Horton from our radio platform here in section 132 of the lower bowl, a sold out target center in downtown Minneapolis for game one between the third seeded Wolves and the sixth seeded Suns. 
Timberwolves up by 20 with 544 left to play. Our engineer tonight is Adam Van Conant. Our statistician is Dave Hanlon. Our studio coordinator, Alex Leibolt and Ben Haney. Glad you're along with us on 100.3 FM, our flagship here in the Twin Cities. KFAN, the fan. iHeartRadio app, Timberwolves mobile app, Sirius XM, satellite radio, channel 86, NBA radio. And all across the Timberwolves radio network from Duluth to Rochester to Fargo and all points in between. Free throws by Rudy, he hit them both. He's six of seven at the free throw line. How big has that been tonight? There's always a different feeling when Rudy hits his free throws. Foul at the other end, it goes against the Wolves. It'll send Devin Booker to the free throw line. The last foul was charged to Nikhil, that's his second. Timberwolves have committed 24 fouls tonight, but they've been physical. This is more their type of game. Kind of need that game and that physicality. Here comes Cat for the first time since it feels like a long time. So about mid third quarter. Rudy will sit. Monte Morris and Mike Conley in the backcourt with Nikhil Alexander Walker, Jaden McDaniels, and Carl Anthony Towns. Wolves essentially have three point guards on the floor. And that will help as Phoenix. Picks up the pressure here, trying to force turnovers. 5.30 left, 107.88 after the Booker free throws. He's up to 18. Towns with it, wing left against Royce O'Neal. Now a double comes, up top Conley, bounces it to the right angle and one. Monte Morris across the lane. The keel in the corner, fires another three, it's offline. The rebound to Royce O'Neal, here come the Suns on the run. Left side Booker against Nikhil. Gets a step into the paint, kick to the corner, deflected by Monte Morris, but Beal's got it. Now Gordon, left side, O'Neal, corner three on the way, good. 107-91, and Chris Finch wants to talk it over. 11-2, Suns run, 16-point, Timberwolves lead. Five minutes left to play, 107-91. We're back in 30 seconds on the Timberwolves radio network. The NBA playoffs are here, and we all know playoff mode is a thing. Listen to the evidence. Playoff crowds are going wild. Playoff players are lighting up the court. Even your speakers are in playoff mode. Okay, we'll take it down a notch, but just a notch, because this is the Turn It Up to 11 NBA Playoffs. Playoff mode is clearly a thing. The NBA Playoffs presented by Google Pixel continue on ABC, ESPN, TNT, and NBA TV. You're listening to the Timberwolves Radio Network. Timberwolves have led by as many as 25. There have been 12 lead changes, seven ties, but a lot of that was early, first to second quarter. The Wolves have been playing downhill, as they like to say, playing with the lead, something they did for only two minutes in three games against the Suns in the regular season. Timberwolves trying to win just their third ever game one. They've only won Two heading into tonight. Two and 11 in game one. The worst record in NBA history in game ones, but they won game one in Memphis. Trying to do it again here tonight, so that would be two of their last three, picking up a victory in game one and setting the tone for the series. Both teams expect this to be a long series, and the Wolves want to get it off to the right start. 107-91. Chris Finch playing this one close to the vest, that 11-2 run forces him to call a timeout. Both teams, two timeouts remaining. Here's Towns, left side, hash mark. They feed Ant against Beal in the corner, opposite the Suns bench. Ant faces him up along the baseline. Drives that baseline, bang, falls down, kick to the corner, got deflected by Eric Gordon, out of bounds. 4.9 to shoot. He's going to trigger in. It's almost underneath the. Well, now they're going to push it out more towards uh, the Suns bench. Here comes Ant to the corner. He thought about rising up for a two, but Beal was right there. Now a double comes. He forces up the shot anyway. Offensive rebound. Mike Conley put back. No. Rebound out of bounds, and it is off of Mike Conley. Conley says review it. Timberwolves are going to call a timeout. Uh, Mark Davis. Yeah, I didn't think Mark Davis was going to allow it. Ben Taylor is. The so Wolves will challenge this. 
Yeah, this is this kind of came out of Durant's hand awkwardly, and he's going to be the last one to touch him. Boy, Mike. Early on the floor is Phoenix ball. We'll review as per rule the coach's challenge by Minnesota. So a challenge here by head coach Chris Fitch. In the regular season, the Wolves were 33 and 16 on challenges. They won 67% of their challenges. That's in the top five in win percentage, and they challenged 49 calls. That's also in the top five as far as volume. I mentioned how both teams expect this to be a long series. Chris Finch talked about the keys to surviving a long series. You know, staying on an even keel is the most important thing in the playoffs. I think as a coach, as a player, as a team in general, like there's going to be so many ups and downs and, and you know, reactions and overreactions that you got to stay on an even keel and, un, you know, understand it's a long series and um, just, you know, that's what your team needs most from you. Even within the course of a game, you've got to have some sort of level of consistency. You can't ride the swings and momentums of a, of a particular game. There are so many of them. A 48-minute game is so long. Here's Mark Davis. Upon review, it has been determined that the ball was last touched by Durant after gaining possession. Therefore, it is a successful challenge. Minnesota will get the ball on the baseline, reset the shot clock to 24, and they receive their timeout back, and they have an additional challenge. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Mark Davis. Well done. I have my doubts about the non-flagrant on Grayson Allen, but he has restored faith. Mike Conley, by the way, missed that putback. He's now one for 11 shooting tonight. One for 11 and 0 of three from deep, but seven assists, three rebounds. And that's not usually a good sign if Mike Conley's got a negative plus minus. He's a minus 12. Tim Bulls were just five and 19 in the regular season when he had a negative plus minus. Here's Ant off the inbound with a fresh shot clock to work with. 4.30 left to play, and the Wolves up by 16. Left to right in the classic edition, white uniforms with Wolves across the front of their chest. And against Durant to the elbow, hesitates. Now drives up off glass, too strong. Rebound tapped out to the free throw line. Booker's got it. On the move, he'll funnel it left side. Beal, cross court, O'Neal, catch and shoot three on the way. That's in and out, no, and the Wolves have the rebound. Feels like the Wolves escaped some potential harm right there. That would have been big, 107-91. It'll be under four by the time the Wolves shoot. Here's Mike Conley, blows by everybody to the rim. Rudy set the screen, nobody went with Mike. And I said he was one for 11, uh-uh. Two for 12 from the field. 109-91, Durant with it up top. Swings it off to O'Neal, left alone. He'll give it back to Durant against Gobert up top. Rudy poked it free. Durant's got it, then Ant strips him. In on a breakaway and a two-handed slam. Edwards, 33 points, nine rebounds, six assists. And it registers his second steal of the night in a breakaway slam that may have sealed the deal. Timberwolves up by 20 with 337 left to go in game one. Durant didn't see him coming. Rudy made it all possible by knocking the ball free. Durant calmly scooped it up, turned, and there was Anthony Edwards like a freight train running right at him. And Edwards knocked it free into the backcourt, scooped it up, and he was off to the races. Edwards with 33 points here in game one. Game one two years ago against Memphis had 36 points in a victory. Last year against Denver, 18 points in a loss. He's played 35 minutes. He's got 33 points, nine rebounds, and six dimes. You just know this kid rises to the occasion. This young man. In that series against Denver last year, he averaged 32 points, five rebounds, five assists, almost two steals, two blocks, 48% shooting, and his turnover is only 1.6 per game. Really low turnovers. The one area of concern tonight is the six turnovers, but he more than made up for that in his production elsewhere. If you're gonna be a high turnover guy, you gotta bring the production elsewhere in a lot of different areas. And he's been able to make up for it. 
And the Suns have thrown in the towel here in game one with 3.30 left. They have emptied their bench. Isaiah Thomas, wing right, working against Ant. It's poked free, out of bounds. Ant wants them to challenge, and the Wolves will. They will challenge again. They'll use their second challenge. And with 3.20 left, we'll see what Chris Finch decides to do about possibly emptying his bench. Minnesota has called a timeout to initiate the coach's challenge to the out-of-bounds decision that was awarded to Phoenix. And this is where the Wolves have had really good success on the challenges, is they've really become selective on not challenging foul calls because those are so subjective and there's always so much contact that officials can basically back up a foul call if there's just even the slightest bit of contact. Marginal versus more than marginal. But on a ball out of bounds, it's pretty simple. And oftentimes, you poke it free, but it's off that player's hand in the last moment when you slow it down. The result? Replay has determined that the ball last touched Thomas's hip. Therefore, it is a successful challenge. The ball will be awarded to Minnesota. We set the shot clock to 24. They do not get their timeout, nor do they have an additional challenge. So the Timberwolves are 2-0 and in challenges in the postseason. And Chris Finch has emptied his bench as well. Monte Morris, Jordan McLaughlin, T.J. Warren, Luca Garza, and Nikhil Alexander-Walker are going to be on the floor. J-Mac will trigger in. Here's Monte up into the front court. 3.18 left to play. Monte matched up against Isaiah Thomas. Josh Okoge is on the floor, the former Timberwolf. Here's Monte off the Luka Garza screen. Baseline, top two, got it up and in. Well, IT is vertically challenged at five foot nine, and Monte was able to get that tough two over at five foot nine, veteran guard. Thaddeus Young into the game, also a former Timberwolf. A Koki inside, missed the shot at the rim. Timberwolves come back the other way with 2.43 left to play. Nikhil Alexander-Walker splits the D. Koki reached in from behind, poked it free. It's out of bounds. It'll be Phoenix basketball. Wendell Moore Jr. is going to check in, and Nikhil will be done for the night. What a great game for Nikhil. You know, I thought the Timberwolves needed a lot of good performances tonight. They got it. They got it. Starting with Anthony Edwards, who in three games in the regular season averaged 14 points against the Suns. He scored a total of 43 points. He had 33 tonight. And he did it in 36 minutes. You see her little spins in the lane, runs it up with the left hand and hits it. Fifth year forward out of North Carolina. 113 to 93. J-Mac to the right side. Here's Monte Morris. Luca Garza back to the basket, hand off to Monte. Who up fakes a three, moves to the elbow, pulls up on the jumper, no good. Bull Bull with a rebound. Now to IT on the push. Pulls up against McLaughlin, finds Bull Bull to the rim, the layup no good. Probably with some contact there. Bull looked like uh, Wendell Moore cut him off inside, spun him around, but not enough apparently to draw a whistle. Timberwolves have it, 145 now to play. Here's J-Mac, back door layup is good. Monte Morris found it. J-Mac gave him a score for two, 115 to 93. Really encouraging performance by the Timberwolves. I, I know the postseason is a different animal than the regular season, but there were still some doubts. Maybe not for the guys on the floor, but I think from Timberwolves fans. And they came out and they did what they needed to do. They look like a 56-win team. They look like the number one defensive team. Here's Garza up for the layup. Got it inside. 112 left to play. The Timberwolves are up 117 to 93. Right side three for Isaiah Thomas. No, Monte Morris with a rebound with a minute left to play. Game two coming up on Tuesday night. Sunday, Monday, not until Tuesday night. It's going to be a long couple of, about two and a half days for, especially for the Suns. Going to spend a lot of that time in their hotel rooms. 
Here's Luca. They want him to shoot the three. He does and drains it. Luca Garza getting into the act. He's got five off the bench. 120 points put up. Here's IT down the lane, runs it up in the left hand. The shot, no. J Max got the rebound. 35 seconds left to go in game one. Wendell Moore Jr. cut off baseline out to McLaughlin. J Mac will burn some clock here. J Mac guarded by J.O., former teammates together. J Mac still with it, lost the dribble, scooped up by Josh Akoki. J.O.'s racing to the rim and he got the shot to drop. Almost lost it at the rim. Shot clock is off. The Wolves can dribble this one out. Five seconds left. Jordan McLaughlin will dribble it out at midcourt. And for just the third time in franchise history, the Timberwolves have taken a game one. They beat the Suns 120 to 95. After totaling 43 points in three games in the regular season against the Suns, Anthony Edwards, 33 points, nine rebounds, six assists, two steals, and was sensational. 120-95, the win over the Suns here tonight. Timberwolves lead the best of seven series, one game to none. Nikhil Alexander-Walker, 18 points off the bench, a plus 28 tonight in 29 minutes. He joins me here on the post game. Nikhil, I think a lot of fans were wondering if the regular season was for real or not, the way you guys played against the Suns. I think you guys showed here tonight it is not going to be the same thing as the regular season. What was the difference? Um, attention to detail. I want to give credit to everybody that was locked in that last week. Uh, credit to the second unit that came in for the final three. They gave us a great job, a great look at getting prepared for what we needed to do today. I want to credit everybody that, from the coaching staff, everyone locked in, took care of their bodies, did what we needed to do because we know what's important, we know what we're trying to get to. And I think there was a focus and attention to detail today that we played with and some life, some spirit. We had some pace to us and uh, we, we handled their runs and um, weathered the storm. How much did having this week off and three full days of practice get you guys prepared uh, for this for this game one and basically the series like I said it was huge and I want to tip yeah. my hat to everybody in this organization everybody yeah. in this organization that stepped in like ant was great all practice cat was great all practice everybody had put their egos to, to the side and everyone was like what do I need to do to win what is it gonna look like for us to win and um, today I think everybody was was willing to do that how intense um, especially that first half how intense was this game with the atmosphere like oh, I loved it um, I try to like just really be calm uh, because it was just so overwhelming. I think <laughs> it was so exciting and, and just the flow of the day just had me going. And as you can hear them right now, uh, they're still going and the game's done. So that just says uh, everything. Yeah, Cat just came over, gave you a handshake. Um, you need a big performance from Cat. And I thought he played really within himself tonight. Did, did those little things that you're talking about and just it was really steady and playing a big role in this game. Yeah, 100%. Um, Kat, like I said, everybody just said, you know, let's leave our, our egos in the trash and came, came together. Uh, the first three games was a showing of just not like not playing hard, not being ourselves, and credit to them. They, they, uh, they scouted well, and they made us adjust, and they pushed us to be better, and uh, here we are. Uh, how big was the glass tonight? Because you guys were dominant there tonight. 52 to 28, that's a plus. Gosh, that's a plus 24 and 13-3 and on the offensive glass. Did that kind of set the tone? Yeah, 100%. I think just everybody going and uh, being aggressive. And, again, it's time to win. It's playoff time. We know what's at stake, and uh, we just won it. Nikhil, awesome game. Congratulations on the victory. Great playing, and we'll see you Tuesday night for game two. Yes, sir. All right, Nikhil Alexander-Walker along with me after a 120-95 victory over the Phoenix Suns. It's a 25-point win in game one, the Timberwolves lead the best of seven series, one game to none. Don't go anywhere. Plenty of post-game coverage is coming up next. Head coach Chris Finch, player reaction from this one, updated scores from around the NBA, highlights from this game, more statistics, and our three factors all coming up on the post-game show next all across the Minnesota Timberwolves radio network.